do your no, about what and watch. comment on it. Well. Stay blessed. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed son. Stay blessed. Your pattern comes out of your experience. Out of your experience. If you don't have an experience with God, you will not have a pattern for ministry. Whatever trends is what you will hop into. Is God blessing us this morning? An encounter with God creates convictions. An encounter with God creates patterns. The edge of any effective ministry, among other things, is the pattern. We win generally in life. Not necessarily by the dexterity of the army, but the flawlessness of the strategy. It is also true spiritually. I know a man of God who, I think he once listened to my teaching, where I was talking about the fact that you may not see any poster of koinonia here and there. And the guy got up with zeal, without knowledge, and went to tell his people, said, no, you know, if apostle can do it, I can do it and then they refused they they said no visitors sleep again no um uh, what they call it uh, flyer he even truly speaking canceled they have what they call a follow-up department canceled everything say if god cannot bring them by and the guy was suffering terribly terribly it wasn't even him that reached out to me it was someone else that reached out to me and said, please, you will need to help my pastor. I think something is wrong. Let it not be that it's your message that is confusing this man. And I said, no. You see, there is a difference between a doctrine and a personalized dealing. There are blueprints that God gives you on account. This is one of the benefits of the secret place. There are things that God will give you customized to your work with God. It is an error if you build a doctrine out of it. Most of the traditions that destroy the body today started as personalized dealings that God gave men. Because of my work with God, listen carefully, it's possible that to create efficiency, God can tell me, you, my son, do not have more than three children. This is my dealings for you. I have weighed it and seen that your most efficient state will be with three children only now when i take that person because of the efficiency that comes by keeping in what to what god told me i would now say look the most recommended way to be effective in ministry is to have three children whereas the destiny of the next prophet is in the fifth child tradition will stop a prophet from coming to bless a generation preachers let's learn this this is why encounters are powerful i'm still buttressing on encounters that God will teach you the difference. There are things God has told me. You will never, never, never hear me tell anybody.
is between me and God. It's like a code of operation. Come, Pastor. It's like a spiritual system of operation. So the, for William Branham, listen. For William Branham, there was a way that the angel of the Lord will come in a meeting. Are we together now? William Branham will wait for a long time. Praise and worship. The worship team is singing. And the guy will just wait. What are you waiting for? He says, waiting for the angel. It was a pattern. And as soon as the angel came, that's it. His eyes, if that angel did not come, sir, this man, it will be like a charm. He can't see. Now, by the time we create a ministry out of that, and you now mentor people that the only way to minister is to wait for the coming of William Branham's angel. Are you seeing that now? Before you know it, a spirit will come as that angel because these spirits can appear as angels of light. This is how many people got into error subconsciously. So an angel will come and tap you and say, I'm here. Now this guy's name is Femi. You say, what's your name? Femi. You say, this thing is working. I mean, I can't, I can't believe this. You didn't go into error knowingly. Not understanding the difference between a doctrine. You don't change doctrines. They are, they are principles defined by God's integrity. But because of the unique nature of man as an entity, God will have to create a system, a curriculum unique to you. That's why every man must know God for himself. I know men of God who don't worship. This is a distraction to them. You are playing that and clashing cymbals. They say, two of you, go out of my meeting. Please, don't distract me. And you are wondering, how in the world is this guy going to heal the sick? You keep watching. You just keep watching. The moment is time, he will tell you, it's time. And from nowhere you will see people flinging wheelchairs and there are people when there is no keyboard when there is nothing playing you will truly think that they used to carry charms they will stand and look helpless and powerless Benny Hinn, up until today huh Benny Hinn, you see the way this protocol guy stand you stand in front in Benny Hinn's meeting like that he will send you away he doesn't want all of that they choose those who sit in front he doesn't want anybody when you are sharing and he's seeing the voice of unbelief are you sure go to the back go to the back fast go to the back you must understand this these are the products of an encounter they will you're dealing with god then you know what to he will separate between personalized dealings and doctrine so every time you are teaching your personalized dealings you put a disclaimer this is to support your understanding not just to create a pathway are we together now papa Ia deboe kneels down when he's about to preach it's not in the bible Paul bows his knees to pray for the people. But because of his work with God and a system he created by the wisdom of the Spirit to acknowledge God. It is alright if you have the revelation for it. But there are many people as they are kneeling down you know that this person is just doing nonsense. Sometimes they don't even pray. They just kneel down and rest their head and stand up to fulfill the ritual. Everybody say patterns. You must know God for yourself. I can tell you not only when an anointing comes to the place, but what anointing. And it will not always be by visions. These are things that cannot exactly be taught. They were products of the secret place. I was trained by the spirit to recognize anointings. I can know what anointing is in a place. It's not everything you say that you see. I remember the first time I started seeing angels. Please listen. I didn't see angelic beings. I started seeing like, you know how a ribbon is. You know how, you know how children play with ribbons. This is what I was seeing. I didn't even understand what I was seeing. Until I stayed in the secret place. 
and then I remembered that angels move in the similitude of light and then God started helping me even before I started seeing angels read but today there's a lot of lies people say I'm seeing an angel standing they are even saying Jesus is standing here Jesus you go and read your Bible and see what happened to men when they saw him in his glory nobody saw Jesus in his glory and just stood like that laughing no. let me tell you if an angel appears here or any spirit being if one eye can see it that doorway that interface that has been created must create a reaction the rest may not see but they will know something has happened look at Paul Saul of Tarsus the moment Jesus appeared he was the only one seeing him the rest just found out they were falling what in the world is going on here because that pattern is not there we have to invent lies lie word of knowledge lie prophecy lie anything because we have been taught that once you can prophesy ministry will be lucrative it's dangerous everybody say encounters you must know God for yourself that when you stand and tell people God will bless you you know the God you are talking about and the fact that he can bless you listen the God of Abraham Isaac Jacob must become your God there is a name that your experience must give God that name is the dimension he will flow with in your ministry You hear Kenneth Copeland when he's ministering, he can just turn and say, yes, sir, I'm hearing you, sir. As if he's talking to his friend. It's his way of knowing God and that encounter that he's had with God. Are we learning something this morning? This is very important. So we need a revelation of an encounter with who God is ministry can be extremely distracting it is your knowledge of god that keeps you in focus do you know you can succeed in ministry as an art the same way you become a tailor the same way you become a a chef you can become a minister a preacher a dispenser of teachings and there is no life there is no power unfortunately members have enough discernment to know whether you are connected to life while you speak at first it will start like a dissatisfaction the wedding in cana and the wine finished preaching is still going on and somehow that life the life giving factor in your communication that is is only obtainable in the secret place it's not there while you teach truth so you find out that what you are teaching is true but the corresponding transformation is not coming ask anyone you know who is close to me I don't sit down preparing sermons just by saying no I think this is nice um, first Corinthians this I think they would like to hear this wow this is wonderful brilliant amazing I mean this and that and that I've been preaching for a while and let me tell you sincerely it is possible for me to sit down and not open my Bible and not study and except God reveals to you by word of knowledge you will not know like I said it's an art when you have been opening a book a long time you are not too dull some scripture would have been in your head just because what you are saying is correct does not mean it is anointed encounters encounters you must make room for God in your life if you want to be effective as a man of God listen to me we have a space pastor for our cars even if you have 10 cars you put a garage for them we have a storehouse where we keep food we have a place for our jewelries ladies jewelries no matter how small the room is there is a small box or something we have where we hide money even if it is in a pit somewhere but there is no space for god in our lives and our environment we smuggle him through any way and say god you just manage it 
and he looks at the space you have for your car he looks at the space you have for your clothes and he says where is my own place where is my own place ministry is an overflow of your secret place ministry true ministry is an overflow of your experience with god impactful ministry is an overflow of your experience with god listen ministry is not teaching necessarily not preaching necessarily not just healing the sick necessarily but the transformation that can come to a people and a territory on account of your knowing god and your understanding his ways this is ministry every other channel they are just platforms they are support systems the life giving part of ministry is your knowledge of god there are men of god who can be so busy one meeting here one leadership meeting here and there you are concentrating on the support structures we'll talk about that a little but i need the the epicenter the pivotal point of a ministry is a man's knowing god so i know you are preparing for ministry not just because you are buying banners and suits not even when you are painting your office and putting a chair i know you are preparing for ministry to the degree to which your hunger and your passion for god is growing i look at your secret place and i know the efficiency that will come from ministry let me tell you why this is powerful our generation is unforgiving about mediocrity if they give a chance to hear god from you and you mess up it will take mercy to bring you back to that stage there are too many alternatives today gone are the days where you have only one voice and they have to make do with that voice right now the moment you don't dispense truth there are scattered around the entire globe are people who are serious with god his presence the gift and the blessing that comes from knowing him his power that comes from a relationship you know i i shared with you um, my story you may have heard me say it one time where i used to stay uh, in the quarters a, a few years ago um i have this neighbor here and there he's also involved in um uh, what do i call it now it may not be fair to call him a herbalist would i say he's a herbalist but he does well you you know what i'm talking about isn't it yes and he believes he helps people with it you know and he has helped people he told me his whole track record that he goes to lagos and does all of that and so when i came to stay there things started really going bad for him because nobody was coming there again and then one night this is true he just came and just knocked on my door and i came out and in a very personal way he said look you know the way his life is going now kai this thing is not really working and he was talking to me whether there was a a possibility for collaboration and there was a way i could like lend him whatever i was using it's true it's very true and so i laughed i told him i said sir i understand he said his own is a gift they inherited it from their own father so it's not some he's not a bad man let me he's one of the nicest men i know till date he's a wonderful man so i'm not talking of um, um an evil man in terms of maybe character no he's a sincere person and i told him i said in this life in this faith work the power you get is not something that is in your hand independent of god it comes from a relationship it's like an intercourse where the woman's pregnancy is dependent on her meeting her husband are you getting what i'm saying now you can go to a herbalist and collect power and don't even know his name i came because i'm in trouble he says do you have the goat the black goat is here what else here and gives you the charm and you leave but that's not the way it is with god when you come and say god give me your hand he said take my heart first it starts with my heart you find my hand in my heart very important whatever has the possibility of destroying listen destroying your love your hunger your passion for more of god you have to trust god for grace to create a system around it and throw it out of your life are you getting what i'm saying it's powerful 
the most destructive things that can kill a man of God are not evil things. They are good things. Evil things you can easily detect and run back. Pride, lust, you can run back to the secret place. But money, accolades. You will read the scripture and say, this is what should happen to a man when you are serious. So you will believe God is working and you will not grow. Satan will always use something good to destroy you. He will seldom use something evil. It will be too noticeable. Everybody say encounters. Very powerful. God bless you, Pastor. From your encounter will also come your message. The message or your mandate. Please write it down. To make sustainable impact in a territory in a generation you must have what we call the message not a message you can have messages you can have sermons but what is the message every great man i know no matter how vast in spiritual truths has a central theme that represents the communication of what god has granted him access to see to know and to communicate to a generation are we together now pastor fred was saying something very instructive when he came here it truly is important you see the best of any minister is only an effective minister there is no how you can see all of god from one standpoint so he distributed his dimensions across the body and no matter how effective you are no matter how vast you are in knowledge you will have to be compelled by the spirit to stay and understand god in a dimension when you mention joshua selman you don't think relationship and marriage and this. no doesn't mean i don't know anything about it but i'm not an expert it's a waste of time if you invite me there somebody will be shouting while i'm saying let us pray and that's not what you plan for people are sitting in a round table with jews and not have you ever seen anyone invite me for a valentine talk no does that mean i don't know what to say about relationship and marriage you will be joking when you are sick and you are lost benihin comes when you are weak and there's no faith walking in you kenneth copeland comes are we together now when there are all sorts of oppressions in your life dr dk or lukoya comes when your life is scattered and you need mercy fast papa kumui will come with one message how many one one message you will hear you won't know whether to stand or to sit down or to lie down listen nobody rewards you until you brand your impact constructively Are you getting what i'm saying now impact cannot be haphazard you must brand it with the unique dimension of god committed to you i should be able to did you look at all the men of god that came here right from yesterday you can almost speak the unique grace the unique operation everybody said the message the message represents why you exist as a ministry you must have the message what did god send you to do he sent me to preach the gospel no that's not your message that's the great commission it wasn't given to you it was given to all of us or a robot said every time he would say this my assignment is to take the healing power of jesus to the nations and the pattern for dispensing it is by laying on of hands even if you were ten thousand he will not pray like benny Hinn and then take testimonies he will lay hands one by one that's why he succeeded he was one time the greatest healing evangelist in the united states tl osborne was granted that grace to communicate a message his entire ministry was centered around the message of the saving the healing and the delivering power of Jesus. When you listen to Samadhi, even if Samadhi holds a business, I mean a, a healing service, 
in that healing service he must mention value that the power of god has come to give you value oh his his lingua franca will betray him it will rebrand him back you are not ready to be honored when there is confusion as to what you represent to the body so you must have a message it must be clear the bible says write the vision make it plain so that you will run that reads it these are very simple truths but you need to understand this the message a flourishing and an impactful ministry must have a message hill song many of you know hill song because of their music they are not just singers they have an exact message and the message is to see jesus glorified as simple as that all their songs are centered around the cross and the finished work of christ that's all they sing about don muen listen to him very carefully don muen the entire scope of his music ministry it's not just to reveal jesus but also to communicate hope and life you listen to his songs he never sleeps he never slumbers so that among the many artists we have when you really need hope you know who to go to it's very important the message number two the second ingredient that will make a sustainable ministry is a strong leadership and an organizational structure now please pay attention we started well by talking about our knowledge of god our encounter from which comes the message from which comes the pattern from which comes our convictions as powerful as all that i just said is if you do not have a strong leadership structure well structured with clear tasks and expectations you may fail this i believe is where i will want to take a pause and honor so many ministries that have poured into my life in this area especially the house on the rock truly speaking i honor them for this one thing because based on my background there was no there was no system to stimulate leadership and excellence are we together now yes but as god began to grant me access to truths and quality relationships he began to help me to see the need for effective leadership when it was time for people to eat bread jesus said let the people sit down in 50s why because if you have a crowd of 5000 people and everybody tries to collect that bread they will kill you and kill the messiah if they can and eat the bread if there is no order one person's appetite will eat one basket they sat down and wastage was minimized it's important you cannot just allow anything to happen from and by everybody in ministry no there has to be a system spiritual people have this problem anointed men and women of god are some of the most disorganized people as ministers why because of the excellency you know when you truly are anointed and you have a message people will forgive every other thing and just endure but it doesn't mean they were designed to be that way is somebody getting what i'm saying leadership to the extent that the secret to scattering the sheep is not to chase them is just to strike the shepherd that's all when god wants to destroy i mean the devil wants to destroy a sheep he does something to the shepherd and that's it moses was weary leading about 2.5 million people he was tired he was fagged out and he went and was frustrated and jethro his father-in-law came to him and said mister you're going to weary yourself everything you are involved in you are a human being he said set captains over thousands 
over hundreds over fifties and he created that leadership structure let them be the ones to handle some of the issues in the early church there was a very intelligent organogram where the apostles were not allowed to be involved in matters of tables when the Christian women remember and the, the women began to fight in every organization once a crowd is more than 12 get ready the humanity of men will play it is leadership that will solve it not prayer for as long as there are one two three four five six seven it is possible for dr emeka to hit me unknowingly who do i report to there is nobody i report to myself and i react back by saying mr man the next time you hold me i will kill you and he will prove to me that he's a doctor you see that chaos and anarchy many times we forget that we are spiritual but we are also human leadership was designed to manage the humanity of men i hope you know divorce now i'm not talking about marriage and i don't want to talk about a very touchy area but i'm saying that was the extent of moses's leadership he found out that things were happening he could not understand and he said lord please permit me i'm going to have to invent a strategy because in this camp of 2.5 million some people have been beating their wives in a way that i don't think my conscience will allow and then god said okay in that case let there be a certificate that will mean that the people have been separated it was not god's original idea but for the sake of peace and organization moses had to invent a strategy leadership is very powerful it makes ministry easy leadership helps you to identify what is wrong you can't blame everybody for one person's mistake if the sounds go off i can't begin to quarrel you and say sam why did the sound go off that's none of his business are you seeing that now when Achan carried part of the treasures in Jericho that should not be carried there was a system of isolating them from tribe to clan until it came to his family it would have been unfair to punish everybody but leadership provided an opportunity to isolate where the trouble was to deal with it when there is no leadership you will blame you will sabotage the creativity and the effort of others because of one person's mistake there has to be clearly defined tasks and expectations let me tell you this never provide an office when there is no need for it whether it's in an organization or it is in ministry do not create an office when there is no need for it human beings cannot stand being idle and they will find something to do a church of say 100 people should not be having pro1 pro2 vice president admin vice president this vice president that the work can effectively be done by two or three people the other seven or ten people will have to look for a way to be relevant is intrinsic in the human to feel that he's making progress and they will have to invent assignments or tamper with other job descriptions for a long time there was no public relations department in this ministry the protocol department was doing the work of five departments because we had not seen a need to create it as god began to bless the ministry the need came and now we had to carve out a department that responds and represents our presence to the international community very very important there is something called due season for things and by the time you create leadership structures that is not yet the season for them you are going to cause a lot of trouble chaos and anarchy if you're with me please say amen, amen. well structured with clear tasks and expectations let me give you an advice 
that I learned following a pastor's conference. I think it's a very instructive advice. Allow for creativity, but never without supervision. You cannot indefinitely allow people to be creative and just to continue to invent strategies without supervision because their creativity will stretch them sometimes to go out of the pattern given to you by God. So it is good that people become and remain creative, but that their creativity must be within the jurisdiction of the, the order that was given to you. If you allow people, there are things they will do that will get to a point where God will ask you who sent you. In this ministry, for instance, I'm someone who is very comfortable to allow our precious people, and they know I love them with all my heart, to be able to come up with their ways. I don't unnecessarily interrupt. There is a level of autonomy within the various departments, but never without supervision. You don't invent an idea and execute it like that. No. Everybody say leadership. This is very, very important. Number three. The third key that is responsible for making sustainable impact in ministry is to understand your execution strategy. Now, these things I'm teaching are very powerful. They are not my opinions necessarily. They are truths that I've gleaned from ministries that have worked based on God's standard and even by the standard of success. I've had the privilege by the grace of God to study the largest and most impactful churches in every continent. Execution strategy. That means the strategies you put in place that will allow that vision to come to pass. There are three things under this. Number one, your execution strategy is what will invent the activities of the ministry within that season. Every activity should not be receivable. Just because a church is doing it, a man of God is doing it, does not just mean you just ship it and bring it. No. Your programs, the subdivisions of the ministry, and the various activities in the ministry, they come from your execution strategy. How God said to do what you should do. You see, for instance, in the miracle service, we, we didn't start submitting prayer requests. Eventually, God gave me this and said it's an opportunity to be able to pray for the people. So every miracle service, we collect the request representing the pain of the people and we cry before the Lord here and you can tell the testimonies that have come out of it. Almost every worker, if not every worker in this ministry, knows the subdivisions of the ministry. They are not a secret. Both the ones for the future and now. It is very clear. There is an exact leadership organogram that defines the various subdivisions of the ministry. These are the platforms through which the purposes of God as committed to us will be executed. Everybody say execution strategy. You need it in business. You need it in, in, in your organization, not just church. Under execution strategy, again, is your culture and ethics. Your culture and your ethics make part of your execution strategy. How do you behave? What is the modus operandi of the ministry? In as much as we frown at tradition, in as much as we frown at religion, no organization becomes impactful until their impact is systematized. Are we together? I have had the privilege to visit um, the churches of all the men of God represented here. And for every one of the churches, there is a culture 
there is an ethic i humorously say it you don't find someone in koinonia just because i'm teaching and he's touched he will not just sit down with one thousand naira and hold it from where he is and just throw it and say let it get to the altar no it's not a culture it's not the way it's not the blueprint that god has given to us are we together don't i hope i hope you are not you're understanding what i'm saying it's very important when you go to the bank they have a system of working they have their work ethics they greet you and smile tired or not it's a system they are paid to do it If something falls on the ground now not everybody will come to pick it are we together now there is a system for picking it there is a department whose jurisdiction also make for remedying this kind of thing most people do not have a culture they do not have ethics let me tell you this culture and an ethic is a system of standardization that means everywhere koinonia service is held there should be an expected behavior there should be an expected pattern i have seen ministries look at this i have seen ministries where a whole service is like 10 churches in one now you would think nothing is wrong with that the guy who does the opening prayer invents his way of doing it and he does it maybe the way he saw somebody who mentored him the guy taking the praise and worship can choose to just do something and say pastor come up me and pastor we're going to dance are you seeing that now he thinks it's supposed to be a very nice thing he say you you must dance or someone can come up and sing worship and because he's taught say, everybody kneel down everybody in the whole church kneel down his presence is here you see those kinds of things destroy your you are anointed but you may never go far you will know you are wrong when you start a tv ministry when there is an angry person from one nation who will write you and tell the government ban this man he's, he's communicating wrong values to the people a culture there has to be a way of working is someone learning this now you systematize your impact when you have a culture train your workers train your workers give them the flexibility to be creative but you must train them when you are coming to perform a function what is the protocol for what you are doing if you are in house on the rock many of you have been there you would notice they have a system for collecting their offerings for praying for all of this based on the blueprint that was given beautiful system saves time the moment you give offering you pass it to the priest on the aisle and he stands and the ushers just walk pick it up and it's done there are churches their own pattern now regardless of efficiency their pattern is you first go outside are we together and then you give whatever key is comfortable to the music director and then you begin to dance you are liberty to choose how fast or how slow you want to dance and one person would dance and go back and dance and go back and listen listen i hope you are getting what i'm teaching you there are many things we do that at a localized platform they can forbear it but if you want to be global you must adjust not violate your convictions but you must be able to adjust to minister to people what kind of songs should you sing you can't leave everybody to his creativity to just raise any song i say i just had a song this morning and i really like it you will learn it now say this and that and that song may not be compliant with the values as revealed by god to the ministry are we together ethics how do you behave when wealthy people come into that church how do you behave when politicians come what is the system of receiving them what is the system of welcoming them you don't wait till they come then you start thinking what do we do with this guy now no 
if if the governor of this state or if someone now is going to come what is the system if you don't learn this god cannot bring influential people under your care if someone comes to testify up here and says god bless me i have a job i mean i have created jobs right now i have the power in fact i'm thinking about it between now and next month i'm even looking for about 300 people to give them jobs what do you think will happen to those who are not employed they will wait for him after service they've already come with their cv for prayer so straight they will just go outside and we lay that person and others may find his address and just come and knock many pastors have refused to come back to certain churches because of what the members did after the service they follow them to their house and say sorry i'm not don't be offended i i just i don't know if you can help me zip my house sir. the way god has blessed you no culture no ethic i'm going to share something and please pastor stand up pastor dan don't be embarrassed yesterday after the meeting the protocol came and met me they packed all kinds of um some i think it was a gift or so they brought for him and the wife and then they gave him and said kai you bless me take sir he refused to collect it he said give the protocol i am here to learn i am here to grow and when the protocol met me i looked i said oh what a wise man i said whatever we can add to this and bless it let us give him and honor him you see that a man of god that is in discipline can come to another man's house listen very carefully i went to a particular church and a young man gave me a car i said no 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 i'm not collecting this car go and give the car to your pastor and bless him when he went to the pastor and said sir god spoke to me to give apostle this the pastor called me and said apostle this gentleman is serious he wants to bless you with the car i said well whatever it is are you in agreement with this sir culture anytime i go to a ministry and i want to do anything that i believe or i know is not the usual practice i will usually seek for permission from the man of god or if i can come stand with him these are things that you have to learn it's not all about anointing 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 there are systems the first system of recovery for a mighty army was the coming back of the skeletons the structure are we together just like pastor fred shared when you enter a man's house listen no matter how great you are if you are in someone else's house you have to walk with their system if they remove their shoes outside take off your shoes i remember the time i went to minister in cherubim and seraphim i was invited to minister there and they were all happy that i was coming and i blessed god for it as soon as i got there you know our dear people there said no 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 apostle enter with your shoes i said why why should i enter with my shoes i took off my shoes because that is the protocol i learned this from dr modok protocol is important adaptation is proof of honor when you come to a ministry don't come at your terms have the flexibility to bend to the practice i never come to a church and then i'm just excited because of my relationship with the pastor i just get up i hold the mic i say god wants to move choir just and you sit down and wait for your time if they call you to take offering don't give word of knowledge let us pray father we bless you for this and that and that when you finish god bless you that's it pray for children don't start talking about marriage and pregnancy pray for children and leave that place as the lord has granted me grace to minister in certain platforms i'm seeing the strictness of complying with these principles because here there are people that can be a bit free but in those places there are people who have earned the right to be offended when you violate their privacy in the name of spirituality is someone learning something execution you must know how to behave and how to function within any organization you must know 
and you must create a system that way how do they reach you if i want to invite you now and i don't have a relationship with you what is the system to reach you many ministries do not have official lines there's no system of reaching them if you are starting you can use your line for many years i handled my ministrations invitations myself because i didn't see a need to have all of that as as time went and i couldn't handle it again i transferred the responsibility to the protocol department there must be a culture and there must be an ethic are we together the third under execution strategy is priorities please don't be tired of what i'm teaching you we're soon going to pray if you truly want to be effective if you came here this morning it's not just for prayer and impartation is to know the ways of god and to excel these are the inner working systems that make for efficiency priorities that means your focus and your emphasis for the now it's not everything god gave you that you can do now there are things god will tell you that is for 10 years koinonia is going to have a tv ministry we're going to have schools we're going to have all kinds of things but for now for now this is the assignment allocated for now and so we restrict ourselves listen the resources that god will give you will always be sufficient for your program for now there are many ministries that do not have priorities and focus a ministry just starts and in one year you may be holding five conferences you may do very well except for the fact that the ministry finance may never rise the entire collection for that ministry in a year at that level may be maybe five million and now you are organizing a program and you are bringing two men of god from the u.s and the two will come with their keyboardists they will come with other people the man himself will fly first class you see that and the pa he can decide and call you and say my son has been crying that he needs to see nigeria you know what that means once a baby can walk he's a passenger full payments like the adult now you pay all of that and you continue to stretch members are you seeing what makes many members run away from the church the program will be powerful but in the end of it is always on deficit always on deficit you cannot build and you cannot grow that way some guys one day i think it was last year very nice group of friends that started to pray and they really believed that they were praying for a revival to come to their land and they sent a text they said apostle we need you in this land and we are going to bring you silver and gold we don't have but what we have mm, just just stop this there don't don't make a fool out of yourselves there are many anointed men of god in that region they will ignore them because they think they are not anointed you see that there is is there is somebody at your level that can serve the purposes of god have the humility to enjoy that grace and grow as time and wealth and wisdom allows even as i am now as a man of god i know my boundaries spiritually financially sociologically i will be stupid to do certain things and engage certain things faith is not foolishness you must know your boundary and respectfully stay there i will not get up right now and then go to portacourt or go anywhere and say i'm doing a city-wide crusade or go to the u.s and say everybody come and fill this stadium it's called vain glory you must get to a point where you know that God has tried for me but I'm still growing are we together there are many times during our leaders meeting you know we can share a few things that we want to execute and many times my people will just hear me keep quiet over the issue once I shelve an issue they know that's it leave it there 
It's very, very important. Priorities. What do we do now? God, these are all the things you have said we'll do. But which do we start with first? What do we do now? So number one is an encounter that births your message, your convictions, your patterns. Number two, strong leadership that makes your impact systemic. Three, an execution strategy that defines your activities, defines your culture and ethics, defines your priorities. Number, the fourth one is your system of reach. I call it your marketing. A system of marketing and reach. Now, please listen. Because many of us men of God are trusting God for increased membership. We are trusting God to honor us with more and more people. There is a strategy. Growth does not just happen like that. There are forces that must be engaged for growth to happen. Your marketing and reach. What does that mean? How do you let your world know you are there? The people will not come when they do not know you are there. The Bible says, and it was noised abroad that Jesus was in town. And it was noised abroad. The Lord gave the word. He says, great is the company of them that published it. This is very important. Please listen. No ministry will excel and thrive in today's world if you do not have an intentional system for your reach and your marketing. This includes business. The first way that you reach people. Now let me talk about ministry. I'm focusing this on ministry. I apologize for other, you know, um, other areas of purpose. The most effective way I know to really draw people is the power of results genuine results genuine results everybody say genuine results please say it say it. don't sleep say genuine results mm. two interesting people in scripture and the way they marketed jesus please sit down sir i'm sorry he's been standing all through i'm sorry sir look up please everyone once upon a time there was a madman in a city called Gadara that madman was hidden in caves they would tie him and he would hurt himself and Jesus crosses to the other side and the first person he meets is that madman after a conversation with him the madman is delivered are we together now and commotion is in the town because people lose immediately those who who own the pigs they just lost and there was all kinds of things this man the bible said because of the impact of what happened he went and gathered 10 cities how many cities imagine that one striking work of the kingdom upon your life gathering people let me tell you there are people who they are more than a microphone everybody knows about their challenges and their predicaments and when god touches them it becomes too notable people will always come to find out who did this testimonies are attractive they have a magnetic property they can draw men How did the scribes know that Jesus would be in this city and you'll be having a program? Notice the scribes never sat outside. They were always early for the meeting. They followed the ministry of Jesus, followed the details. They would hear that God did this today, tomorrow he did this, tomorrow he did that. This is where I will want to bring a little balance. There is no other means of marketing and reach that will be more effective 
than a transformed life please listen to me the greatest way to invite people is to transform those you have you are not going to pray for more people to come and join the pile of lack of transformation change the people the greatest testimony that that really blesses me in ministry is not that the sick were healed sincerely thank god for that it's not that this and that happened people receive this but when people say my life changed i listened to the message something happened i got to know the holy spirit i became a leader that's transformation this is why you see ministries like that of joyce mayer joel austin you may not see them do physical miracles and so because of that you may think that they are not doing anything until you see the systems that are intentionally transforming people some of them have tv stations in prisons some of them design the programs that the prisons use and so the endorsement of the government has made them a voice this is influence i've told you that the kingdom advances in two ways primarily number one is evangelism number two is influence the second was the woman at the well jesus comes to meet this woman at the well and her life was in shambles many husbands and then jesus began to speak with her when he was done speaking with her he didn't even ask her go and publicize she ran and said come see a man this is how people come to our churches listen they will not say don't you know apostle joshua selman they say come see a man when the people come and encounter you and your god then they will go back and say now we believe not because you told us we have seen for ourselves let people not be invited and come to your church and say where is the man the service is over what did you invite me for what was your proposition what did you say would happen to me you told me if i came i would hear the word of god you told me if i came the worship would lift me you told me if i came i would see excellence i'm here now the grace is about to be shared i didn't see any of those things now that person will go back and still publicize but against your impact you say make sure that any day you see this man please don't waste your time there's nothing happening there do not ignore the referrals and the endorsement of transformed men do not ignore it this is one of the ways that God by his spirit has built this ministry for himself transformed lives you cannot deny transformation you may say a miracle is fake a breakthrough is fake a prophetic word is fake this is just psychology but how do you explain a transformed life are we together i was blind now i see i was wrong now i'm right i was in darkness now i'm in the light i was poor now i'm blessed this is the kingdom alongside the results and the testimonies that they bring pay attention to your media ministry media ministry do not ignore it son of man what seest thou and he said a flying scroll he was seeing the power of technology a scroll that can fly it's a scroll that contains information but it's not limited to a localized environment it can fly to regions the media ministry is powerful look what the social media is doing that someone can actually sit down from one spot is a system that has broken down it has manifested omnipresence that i can be here and yet i can be there zuckerberg is in his house but he's in your phone he's in your heart he's in your life he's in your mind he's in your decisions he forced himself into your values you cannot plan without him he didn't ask you he forced his way there you can institutionalize your impact such that any generation that ignores god through you will pay for it 
whoever ignored jesus paid for it whoever ignored elijah paid for it whoever ignored moses paid for it the media ministry is powerful brand your content to reflect your values brand your content to reflect your values very important media is powerful there are many nations that I have not been to that today have been so marvelously blessed by what God is doing here. It is the power of the internet. It is the power of the media. It's very important. A disclaimer though, you must have strong spiritual and emotional strength to explore the tool of the media. Because you see, let me teach you something, dear men of God. An average man of God is already used to lavish celebration by the people within his circle. Nobody may have the right, whether they agree with you or not, they may not have the courage to confront you and say, I don't like you. Welcome to the world where they, there are audacious men and women. You can make one statement and your members are clapping and somebody comes and says for two weeks, let's analyze the nonsense this preacher has said. And someone will be saying, that's my man of God. He said, that may be your man of God, but that's my foolish man who I'm correcting. If you don't have the emotional stamina, listen to me. Because many Christians are strong spiritually, but we are weak emotionally. They said this about me and it destabilizes you. Then do not be global. It's a risk. You are not authorized to be global as a ministry and as a man of God if you do not have the fortitude to stand disagreement, to stand persecution. Do not fear being controversial, provided you have convictions. They talk about Jesus and they talk about Satan. No matter how far you go, it will be in between two of them. Your Jesus is the one someone can paint on facebook have you seen different kinds of caricatures of jesus your jesus that we go to jerusalem and roll on the floor for and the people are just watching these madmen i thought they were here for tourism my jesus this is where you died this is your tomb they say this is not the real tomb they say this is the one that i <laughs> don't be offended when someone has no regard for your values men are just men this is a powerful advice I'm giving you. When I started out in ministry, let me tell you something. And, and Ejimi is here, he will testify. I'm not somebody that, I, I'm, a, I'm a man of peace. I honestly don't like trouble. So if it means me lying down here for peace to reign, I don't like controversy and I don't like trouble. And that time I used to wear myself out. I would pray and just spend time with God at about one or two. When I now want to go and rest, someone will now call me and say, Apostle, then there was a place I used to meet in, in the campus there. Are you at so 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 place? I said, no, I want to go and sleep. And then they now blackmail me and say, didn't you say God sent you for us? I, I'm having pains. I want to see you and you are complaining. And I feel bad. I just go back and say, Lord, this is for your glory. <laughs> Let me tell you something about men. You will never satisfy their desires. You do not have that ability. The same thing that will put a crown on the head of another is what another person will advocate that you take off. If you do not sustain emotional intelligence, you will break down. Nobody wants to hear anything negative about himself. If, if I produce this, and you hold it and say, but this is dirty. You mean, Pastor Alpha, this is all you could do? As brilliant as you are? Whereas, while you are saying it, this person is on his knees collecting it. Many of you here, looking at me, you want fame but without the cross that comes with fame there is a huge cross you think it's everybody that likes me are you joking you think it's everybody that believes in me are you joking you think it's everybody that respects me 
Are you joking? Have you not seen people insult Papa Ia Deboe? Have you not seen people insult Kenneth Hagin? One time I stumbled across a video material that wrote down the name of almost every known man of God and just captioned it that they are all going to hell. I said, ah, these are the guys that have taught the whole body of Christ. So if they are all going to hell, let's find out quickly so that we can, because you can't dodge any of them. I mean, these guys just carried the body of Christ and said the church is going to hell. convictions do you have the stamina to be controversial because every great vision is first fought before it is honored it is the price for renaissance is the price for a revolution is the price for doing something different ask the fathers when women began to preach in the church it was war when the power of god began to move i remember a man of god i went to minister in his church and he was telling me about his state he said those days if someone falls under the anointing they can almost go and lock you up he said when the power of god started moving in and through his ministry it was strange they said he was diabolic he was devilish and all of that how will you feel if someone came for your service and while everybody was kneeling down they were just looking at you like this Say, is this what you call a man of God? This is this what you call church? Shame on you. And you go back and say, God, they said shame on me. God will say, go and find out what they said about me. <laughs> Let, let's keep going. How many of you precious sisters, they see you walk around. Oh, this lady, no earrings. Oh, this lady, head tie all the time. And you feel bad. And you are standing. Because some persons who have their values don't want to keep their values and come to destroy your confidence bending to become like people will break you because you will have to bend to every direction and your body cannot bend to every direction somebody will say sing traditionals alone we are africans you will dance and somebody say no that dance is is a demonic dance you are doing traditional and you are dancing did you see the way that lady was? No, 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 no. The way that lady is dancing with the brothers, their mind will not be focused on the cross. Now you go back to sing hymns and someone will, you know. Listen. Be guided by the fear of the Lord, by conscience and by posterity. Nothing more. You live to please everybody, you have trouble. God made the work easy. Focus on him. He's the only one who will mark the script. Everybody is a student. The best student in a class will still be assessed. So don't let the ignorance of people around just come and challenge you. Are we blessed? I just digressed a bit. We're going to pray to teach you this let me tell you sincerely and i submit to you uneasy lies the crown the the head that wears the crown it looks glorious when you see great people and great ministers sit on the throne but let me tell you ask every man of god here if you say a conference is coming you can tell them sir i saw a vision it is done the bills are not there ultimately is that man's faith that is going to stretch you come and say pastor just to reassure you the conference must happen except god didn't give me the revelation you had the revelation this is the man that is going to produce the finances by faith that's why you see depressed preachers everywhere sisters that's why many of you are afraid of marrying men of god when you weigh the trouble and weigh this just say kai <laughs> that's the price for glory my dear people living in a world where everybody loves you that world is a dream that world is a big dream do you have the stamina to be controversial and yet focused and yet determined there are times that I go to minister and i thank god for the honor sometimes right from the airport 
you know sometimes people have bands that play sometimes they have some dignitaries that they bring to welcome me and i just come down and i see people who don't know me and you just see the anger who is the guy this is him apostle apostle koinonia so what i wish koinonia i mean you see the anger this guy and i say what is it my fault what, did i stop you from rising i mean look at look you see how people are there are many times people talk about my coming in many regions. They hype it. Apostle is coming. Your life. I'm telling you, just come. I can discern. I'm a spiritual man. As soon as I enter, people are jumping. Sometimes you can see through the crowd. What is this? What is this generation becoming? Just because a man entered? Jesus entered. You didn't clap. Now a man is, you know. And then I just laugh it over and I love them. When I come up to preach, usually sometimes they are standing, oh yeah, let's see what he's saying, that he's unusual. What has he said that Kenneth Higgins has not said? What has he said? Let's see. And many times, usually when I start talking, five, ten minutes, they start softening up a little. They just look at nod, then later they do like they want to open the notebook. They open it a little. And then later on, they're like, ah, this, I mean, this is. <laughs> Pastor, when they persecute you, it's not unusual. It's not always because you are wrong. Sometimes it's because you are right. Your assignment is to help even your persecutors. So accommodate their ignorance while they change. That's what makes you a leader. The ability to see the more superior version of themselves. Hmm. I'm blessed by my own teaching here already. The last. The last secret to sustainable impact is the availability of financial resources please write it down this is a minister's conference and i'm just hoping and praying that god truly added value this morning to someone's life finance please look up pastors you will bear me witness and every man of god here will tell you Whoever ignores the place of financial resources in kingdom advance will pay for it and pay for it again and again. You see, come, David. When you start out in ministry, you don't really need finances. Usually, you meet at one corner, under a tree, somewhere. All you are concerned about is the power of God falls on you. You teach. You don't need a mic. You don't need anything. So your focus will be on Jesus, your growth, and all of that. But now you get to a point where leadership, where administration, and other things begin to come in. The financial burden of ministry can strangle your prayer life. It can strangle your word life. It can even strangle your values. Everybody say finance. One of the questions that I ask the Lord sincerely from the depth of my heart. I learned this from Pat Robinson, the founder of CBN, 700 Club. He said when God called him to do ministry, he asked God three things. He said, Lord, please give me three things. Number one, wisdom. Number two, favor. Number three, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If you will give me these three, I will go. When I heard it, I went back to God. I said, God, I don't know if I'm going to ask you. I've asked you before for your presence. And now, maybe let me ask first before I will find out later that I made a mistake. Please, talk to me about the finance of this vision that you are showing me. How is it going to come and where will it come from? You see the way ministers have been attacked everywhere? You call people to sow seeds. The next thing someone is insulting you they, that is not the system of the world and of course i know that here and there people have exaggerated these things because there are bills to pay yeah. 
I don't want to tell you the weekly budget that runs this ministry. It is not necessary. But just believe me when I tell you, you can run a conference with the weekly budget of this ministry. And we're not even in our own place. It's true. The rentals, the transportation, the power, and all the things that have to be put in place. And yet you are supposed to be focused and loving. That's why some men of God come off the stage. You see the anger. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Is it this? What part of amen can't you? Can't, and you know that this, this pain, the person is not bad. He's trying to say encourage me and you are refusing. The Holy Ghost can use money to create joy. <laughs> you are pastors. Imagine that we came here right now and we told you there is no finance for tonight's meeting. The communion alone for tomorrow. If I tell you how much was spent on the communion just for tomorrow's miracle service you will be surprised you will ask yourself whether it's necessary or necessary must we take communion can't we just speak prophecy instead prophecy is cheaper just be blessed i mean what is there with communion it will not cost you anything for starters less than 25 million naira per month to float a television station how much per month not hd that's the channels you switch that you say please let's move to another channel that's what they paid did you hear what i said those channels that you see a lot of haze is it black is it white this is what they paid didn't satan pay men to say jesus is not lord as soon as he resurrected they called some people and said okay come let me tip you Say Jesus is not Lord. We will settle the words on the top. And Satan is still using money today. If the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is not empowered in these end times, my brothers and my sisters, please listen to me. This is not about an addiction to money. This is money just like the anointing, tools for kingdom advance. It is important. Some of our visitors, we just got news that because of, I think, the convocation or so. I didn't even know there was convocation happening on, on Saturday. And now they just passed a directive that, you know, all our people there, they should evacuate them from the, um, the, the hotels that belong, you know, that we lodge them there. Can you imagine that? Just like that. Get out. Out. We have visitors coming. You and your money, get out. Now, imagine if I come and whisper and say, Reverend Bandoma, Pastor Fred, please, we need 500,000 this night. Now, can you find a way? If I do it directly, it will pinch me. So, find a way. No. Money can help you have integrity. Oh. Let me tell you this. It's true. It's true. Financial resources are important. Provided they are kept within the jurisdiction of their relevance. They work wonders. We need heavy financial resources. The gospel is free. But the means to take it to the lost is very expensive. The vehicle that carries the gospel is heavy. Every church. Thank you. And that includes businesses. Please listen. We're going to pray. Must have. I've stated this before. But number one must have a strategy for income generation now the bible is very clear as to how financial resources should come into the church the bible allows for tithes allows for offerings and all kinds of givings and partnership the bible allows that provided the resources are used with integrity and truthfulness but because of the peculiarity of our world today if all you do is depend on tithes and offering, 
you will only run church services you can't run projects i've i've been i've been to the churches of all my dear friends and i've seen the projects that they are doing and many of you may not know but with all humility and to the glory of god we acquired a property recently and um i may not tell you how much that is but i can only give you an idea 36 plots of land now listen it was paid cash without raising any even the leaders didn't even know so that when we come to church we can serve god in truth and in spirit and not just to come and say people we are going to have to do this i'm not saying it's wrong to challenge people don't trivialize it reverend ubandoma shared here that there are people who have the grace for helps anybody that is a kingdom financier your first assignment after knowing god is to be extremely wealthy if you are not wealthy you are wicked and you are failed to supply for the resources and the blessings of heaven i insist and i make sure that there's no financial pressure whatsoever on the workers and the leaders in this ministry that everything that has to do with committing seeds is done by revelation and truthfulness don't be angry when you see pastors manipulating people i don't endorse it but sometimes it's an expression of the pain they were mentored to trivialize finances and so they pursued the things of god sincerely so but now they found out that there is a level of financial capability you must have to excel a jimmy during the business session for those of you who were here he ran us through a lot of demands minus luxury pastors will tell you here the amount of an average man of god just on dressing just not luxury just on dressing can build many houses are we together because a man of god cannot dress shabby and dress scattered is the same you that will say what is this this is not jesus when i started with the lord there was a year that god opened my eyes to the necessity of financing ministry i remember when i switched and i said believers it's me that has been teaching you on purpose and the power of god and intimacy with the holy spirit and the kingdom now in addition to that curriculum god has introduced finance whoa whoa i had i got the blow of my life apostle has backslidden jesus is lord what happened apostle leaving all of these things to come to mundane things like finances now I'm, I'm not i'm not i'm not don't hate anyone don't don't i'm like joseph sometimes persecution is proof that you are really sent you see the ignorance in the people and you know if i don't manifest they will remain like this they are persecuting me is validating the fact that they are ignorant I went to the Lord crying to him and say God what is all this and the Lord told me you can choose to listen to men or listen to me I'm showing you the future and I said Lord show me your ways please let me not get to a point in ministry where I have to do what I shouldn't do because I'm looking for finance most members don't know that men of God have other things with their lives too who pays the school fees of that man of God's child how do you run the church by the privilege of God's grace there are so many of our children here that we take care of it's not something to blow a trumpet about not school fees they are upkeep there are people whose daily living is in the pocket of another person and that done effortlessly I have seen and I tell you by the privilege of God's mercy the advantage of financial resources maybe this is why some of you came for this conference 
it may be a pastor's conference but you have done well in these other areas but you may have been the victim of this skirmish communication by the gates of hell that financial resources are not necessary change your mind please change your mind the earlier the better so that you will not eat your children in the future and so that you will not sell your children to pay debt the prophet although a prophet he died and left his children and one woman in debt By the time you pastor families that are not doing well, you will find out that it is in the efficiency of the people that you are also blessed. Hallelujah. When God showed me this, I was grateful when I found the keys. Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. Full-time ministry in today's world does not mean the absence of activating streams of income it means full-hearted commitment hear what i'm telling you the 21st century church you need to adjust your understanding of full-time ministry full-time ministry does not mean throw away every opportunity to lift you it means let your heart be committed full-time because if you ignore everything and say me i'm not i'm not a businessman i don't do anything let me tell you hunger will always drive israel to egypt it was hunger that drove israel to egypt like he's driving many of you right now you love god until now you are beginning to teach things that you know should not be if you must be outstanding in ministry Please, make it a point of duty by the grace of God to conquer this finance thing. The same way you press for the anointing. The same way you press for revelation. Don't dichotomize them. And don't let the devil make you feel one is carnal. And No, they are all spiritual. What is carnal about money? It takes the spirit for you to prosper. The same way you press for character, anointing, revelation please add finance to the list as the tools together the body of jesus was hanging on the cross i've taught you no prayer warrior could bring that body down it took resources to bring the body who was the owner of the grave that jesus entered he came out from it and saved you but whose grave who donated his grave for prophecy to be fulfilled Whose donkey did Jesus climb if he was broke and he did not have a donkey? There would be no triumphant entry. He was born in a manger. Whose manger? I will never pastor and lead the people who know God and don't know finances. They will know both. I believe in influence. I believe in the ease that kingdom understanding together with influence provides. Africa do not mix Christianity and the depraved culture that our servitude our pre and post colonial servitude has been interwoven with Christianity we mix everything together and make doctrines out of them Africa has largely been a territory of servitude we have not understood leadership we don't know influence It's strange to our culture and so in the dealings of God, we limit our understanding to submission, which is important. But we hate influence. And the principles that get us to the corridors of power, we hate and we fight. It's wonderful to fear God. It's wonderful to love God. But if you do not have an efficient leadership, you will not last there will not be a system of building the reason why this building is built because is because one block allowed another to stay on it if the block refuses and said that's not how i am you would not have a structure leadership number three strategy you have to execute systemically to build according to patterns number four is your reach from jerusalem from judea samaria to the ends of the earth he would have just said to the ends of the earth but he broke them in levels 
the way you sell Jesus in Jerusalem is not how you would do it in Judea. It's not how you would do it in, in Samaria. For every one of these regions and levels, there are strategies for your reach. And finally, finance. You need finance. It is one of the greatest tools. Do you know that in Europe today, pastor, Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. They've never had one city-wide crusade. One. One. You know what they do? Agree to be gay and agree to be a Muslim will pay you through school. And they go back and say, Daddy, this is what they said. You say, I won't pay your school fees and you will not be a Muslim. You say, I've gotten the answer. Sir, where is the place to sign the signature? To be gay? Fine. To be a Muslim, fine. One of our dear ladies, I remember many years ago, she got born again. Her brother was still a Muslim. The father was still a Muslim. Then the brother got born again. Then eventually the father got born again. When the father got born again, pastor, true story, the wealthy people stashed money at the back of a car and drove from Kogi to Lagos. They said, what is wrong? Sit down. What happened? Is it that you lost in business? What happened? Because they believe if you come to Jesus, it is because you are frustrated and you are welcome. But then they are saying, I mean, how have you reduced yourself to give your life to Christ? What happened? The day she told me, I said, my God. They snatched the car with money and opened it. Please deny Jesus and have money to get your life back. Hear me. If Michael Jackson ever said Jesus, even by mistake, he would have won more souls. I am Michael Jackson. I love Jesus on his shirt. You will write your name too. I am Sam. I love. Even a wizard would say, I am a wizard. I need Jesus. That's the power of influence. Nobody asked you to wear what you wear. They made you wear it. They created a need and forced it. We can force a generation to see the relevance of Jesus. Not by poking it on people's eyes. But building correctly. The church must prosper. Please pastors hear me. Gone are the days where you tell people I'm a pastor and they pity you. They say so pastor Alpha, this is it. You went and got a lecturing job in University of Joss and now with all that God has done, this is how you want to waste your life. Whoever said ministry was a cause? Whoever said serving Jesus is what people do when they are failed in life and they don't know what else to do? They say instead of wasting my life, at least let me serve in the vineyard. We must change that perception in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is heavy. It takes finance to lift it up. We are mandated to lift it high. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Nado kaka sunanka, ubangi chika isayabo. Naki mama. Please hold hands with someone by your left and by your right. Micah chapter four, please. We are going to pray. Sila Maharusia Katabranda Gadusia. There is coming a generation that will defy this. There has to be a generation that will represent Christ properly. Micah chapter 4. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain, the influence of the Lord's house 
shall be established in the top of other stratas and influences and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow to it next verse verse 2 and many nations how many many nations shall come say come and let us go up to the mountain of the lord and to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem you see let me tell you every great move of God starts like a joke the kingdom of God is likened to a living it's a parable a living looks small and harmless until it sees the what they call it the dough you just mix a little of it and stand back and watch the power of that tiny thing you added. I remember those days when my mother would be making cake or something. I used to wonder that small thing. Just throw the thing there and just mix it and it begins to rise. That's what is happening. Something you are receiving. We are making noise and people are these are noise makers. They are just broke people consoling themselves. Uh-uh. The Lord himself is the captain of this army. God has gathered us from several places to tell you that whether or not in the fivefold ministry like Reverend Ubandoma shared or whatever dimension of kingdom service you must insist that Lord through you my generation will know that Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. hallelujah hallelujah i wish the minister's conference were to run for days i would have taught you a lot of things one of them is the ministry of men you are not free until men come into your life. Please listen. We are going to pray. If you have money, you are not yet favored. You know you are favored when you have access to the hearts of men. True favor is not just money. True favor is men and all that they have. I can give you money. Doesn't mean I love you. But when I give you my heart, with my heart is everything connected to me. Listen, let me tell you this. I remember the first major financial miracle that God brought to this ministry. Till tomorrow, I don't know the person. It was like a joke. Because when they make transfers to the ministry, I get the alerts. And I saw an alert that almost brought me to my knees. I said, God, what is this? Who is this person and they didn't even text to say okay i'm the one i said they should try to see if they can get me the person and they couldn't and i just said this is it men if you do not have men that lift your hands you are going to fall in ministry you may be moses but your hands will be tired and you will need the hands that hold you financially spiritually giving you encouragement and love you can't imagine how blessed i am hearing that pastor left gombe gombe is very far zamfara far reverend ubanduma was here with his family he's here again one of my friends called me and said he's coming and you know this is not a standard conference we didn't send any letter of invitation i spotted different ministers here and there father the mighty men 
that will hold my hands as I lift up your name. I draw them in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Favor with men. Favor with men. Favor with men. Favor with men, oh God. Shalabarakatosa Predekatesh, Kalaba Shanadas. Open the doors of favor with men. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. When Jesus came to the fig tree, he expected to find fruit. He came because he was hungry. Not finding fruit, he cursed it. If he found fruit, he would have blessed it. If your life and your ministry does not produce extraordinary results, your life will be full of bitterness and hatred and anger and competition. This is what you see happening around the body of Christ. This one hating this one, this one fighting this one, this one getting angry. There is no need. When God invests a dimension of strange results in your life and ministry, by the teaching of truth and by the mighty works that come from your hands, you will be surprised to see the way the nations will flow. They will inconvenience themselves to honor Christ in your life. Father, give me results. Real results. Results of salvation. Results of transformation. Results of miracles, signs, wonders. Breakthroughs is someone praying. And evidence is the end of all argument. A genuine result is the end of all argument. You are in business, cry. Give me results in business. Give my organization results consistent results please pray give me results hallelujah hallelujah John the prophet is in the prison and he sends his disciples to question the messiahship of Jesus. He says, go and ask him, are you the messiah or should we expect another? Jesus does not answer. He turns back and begins to heal the sick and cast out devils. He said, go and tell John what you have seen. Go and tell him what are the signs of the messiah. Ask John. You need real results in your life. You heard the testimony of our precious mommy. You see that? That you just sit in a car and something, a challenge of many years just goes. Everybody is a giver. There is a level of results that will make them give. Please listen. Let me tell you this. The same person who will say, I will not give you five naira. Is the same person who will carry money and say, sir, the privilege of having this. Everybody who gives to you has relatives in need. That they say, don't disturb me again. And they will come. There is a level of impact that will make any seed look like a favor to you. You need to trust God. 
results empower you yourself. There are companies today and there are businesses today that take a sizable portion of their profits and I'm not talking of small startups and transfer to this ministry consistently because of something that happened. I don't say this to brag. It's because we're in a pastor's conference. I am a non-executive board member in certain companies. I never sat down in any board meeting. I don't even know them. They believe I represent the ark of God to their business. And they are there. And I just see alerts in my phone. Where is this coming from? Don't trivialize results. Results can make your life easy. We are going to pray it again. Please don't be tired. Our time is gone, but we are men of God. Listen, Lord, I have seen certain dimensions of results, but multiply the results upon my life. Beyond argument, please pray. Beyond contention. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. John chapter 1 and verse 6. Never forget this scripture for as long as you live. There is a goal, there is an object behind everything that we do, that we call ministry. Whether it is the fivefold ministry or your business as a ministry, ministry is any channel that can lead to souls saved, lives transformed, and Jesus glorified. If giving birth can do that, it is ministry. If singing can do that, it is ministry. He says, there was a man sent from God. His name was John 7. The same, the Bible says, came for a witness. Say witness. To bear witness of the light that men through him, his witness, his testimony, his results might believe. That's it. When all is said and done, dear people of God, this is all we are driving at. That through my life, through the hand of God upon my life, through my business, through the ministry, through family, through everything, that Jesus be glorified. You're going to turn this to a prayer and say, Father, use everything. Use my results. Use my life. Use my teachings. Use my business. Use my publicity. Even for your glory. Someone pray. For your glory. Use the wealth that you give me. Use the influence that you give me. The power of the Holy Spirit. Access to the hearts of kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have learned from the word of God and by experience that Satan is not looking for many things. Satan is looking for anything that can give God glory. Whatever can give God glory is a threat to Satan. I think you should write that down. Anything that in and through your life can give God glory is a big threat to Satan more than you know your job can be a threat to Satan if it will give God glory your business can be a threat to Satan if it will give God glory your prosperity can be a threat to Satan if it would give God glory your having children can be a threat to Satan 
And that's what he's looking for. So why should the devil allow God give you a car when he knows that with that car, you will no longer come to church alone? You want to buy a bus and he had your prayer when you were vowing and said, Lord, bless me with this bus and I will make sure this bus is full every Sunday. And the devil says, oh, I had that. If you said, Lord, buy me a bus to prove to the people in my village I'm not a failure, he doesn't mind. Because all that doesn't bring glory to God. Let me tell you, not everything threatens Satan. I can tell you what threatens Satan. The moment he sees your heart saying, Lord, my life and anything that will pass through this life will give you glory. It may look simple, but you have said something to Satan that is more painful than praying in tongues. That my life, <sighs> Lord, bring these millions for me. And Lord, if you bring these millions for me, I have 11 siblings along my family line that have not gone to school. And Lord, I know that if you put this in my hand, I will make sure all of them go to school. And I will make sure they go to mission schools. And Satan says, aha, uh -huh. The school was not the issue. The mission, mission Abi, and that's it. An attack that you did not invite comes to your life. And you'll be wondering what is happening to my business. It's not the business. There is an agenda. You have connected your business to God's heart. And Satan says that's a threat. Remember, in the Bible, Satan killed children. He didn't wait till they grew. If he killed children, he will kill visions even before they manifest. He doesn't have to wait till you get the first contract. He doesn't have to wait till you start the church. He's seeing you in the secret place praying. And say, Lord, you know I desire this healing anointing. Not just for myself. In this entire territory. The men of God are wonderful. But it's just evangelism here. There's no demonstration of the power of God. Lord, I come to you. If it pleases you, can you grant that through my hands? Ah, the devil sees what you are saying. If you said, Lord, anoint me because my uncle said something that I will never be a success and I need to prove to him. It will not threaten the devil. But the moment Satan is looking for the kingdom component of your prayer, the kingdom component of your communication, anything you say and do, if Satan can find the heart of God in it, he's threatened. Lord, I thank you. Lord, you know that it's, it's not like I don't like men. Lord, I, I want to be able to, to marry somebody that loves you. It's, my, it's always been my privilege to serve you. Serve you. I want my children to call upon your name. The devil had that one too. He didn't hear, Lord, I worship you. He didn't hear, Lord, I thank you for this day. He had my children will worship you. And Satan says, no way. Make sure, make sure that this lady wherever her marriage is bury it to nonsense give her money give her a job because she has not made any statement about god being glorified in the job so she can have the job but the one that god will be glorified through that's the one i'm interested in are we together and then when satan hears you pray prayers like lord take my everything the devil says demons you can go i'm staying here take my everything <laughs> there is a reason why satan attacks he does not attack you because of you listen god is comforting us already because there are many of us wondering what is all this lord what is this i will see something almost getting to me what is the thing? Why, why is Satan taking my case personal? There is a reason. The reason is not you. Don't be fooled. It's not you. The reason is something you represent. Something that is of God through you. Satan has seen that by God's preordination, your womb is supposed to carry one of the prophets that will herald God's end time agenda. And he says, whatever, make her marry wrong or make her not get married or make her get married to somebody who has the cause of barrenness. Just do whatever you can do to clamp this lady. Oh, 
oh god my father is 71 they are still staying in a rented house lord would you open a door for me and as you do this lord you see my heart i will renovate all the churches in our village i will sponsor this i will buy a bus and satan says buy a bus for nonsense renovate which church all of a sudden you find out that the business that everybody likes you suddenly your business partner starts saying i don't understand you again it's not the business partner my brother a commitment from you has touched the heart of god and it sounded an alarm to the gates of darkness you see when you when when you understand how and why satan attacks then you will know why the power of god will continue to come around your life until victory is complete hmm. one day i i can't remember where i was driving to sometimes i just drive in the night alone and sometimes i just move and then i parked somewhere around that market side and i was looking at someone just passing and the lord was telling me something about that guy and the lord was telling me that guy going i just saw the guy just moving and he said that guy the devil has rubbish that guy true story and that in this guy's destiny he was supposed to be the first preacher in his entire lineage and i saw the boy moving with all these these rough and scattered boys around and i was just looking i said my god if your life does not have a message that gives god glory you will beg satan to come he will run satan a demon goes to a wilderness and because there's nothing in that wilderness that has god's assignment the demon casts itself out of the wilderness back to a human being that god can use remember jesus said when a spirit leaves a man it goes to a wilderness he didn't find anything in that wilderness that is pro god and he left it back said i want the man because god can still use him i can tell you why satan is threatened by everything around you your worship does something to him your commitment does something to him when satan comes and sees our little children hearing the word of the lord he says what can i do to this family to stop them from coming for koinonia and the easiest way is can i cripple their finances because if there is no money there's no food to eat there's no transport and if there's no transport there will be argument between daddy and mommy you see that wise plan all of a sudden you find out that something that would have worked does not work again and he steps back and allows you to blame yourself and while the children are suffering they say sorry it's time for koinonia i say koinonia what and the devil said that's it mission accomplished it was never about money that's why a lot of people say why is it that unbelievers who don't love god they are getting rich what in their life threatens satan it's not about I mean, look if you think it's about money and tea and bread and cars no sir satan was willing to give it to jesus he said jesus why go the long route just bow to me i will give you this meaning if satan if jesus bowed to satan all of a sudden even caesar will be dethroned and jesus could go and sit down and satan doesn't mind provided you are my boy enjoy everything you never the devil will never allow you to hold the hands of god and hold the hands of the blessing he will say choose one hold the blessing and leave god or hold god and leave the blessing the miracle service says you can hold both that's why we're here tonight yes sir that you can say i can still serve god and pay my sibling school fees because of the blessing of the lord i can still serve god and i don't need to go and collect any charm yet i will prophesy to nonsense and cast out any demon you see that listen you are here tonight i'm announcing to you very straight up what we are here for we are not here to waste our time we are here to stand in agreement with god i have seen how people in ignorance allow the devil 
to make nonsense out of their lives. Choose between raising a godly family or not getting married. Choose between being a very wealthy man or a pastor. Hello? Choose between being the first graduate from your village or being a popular musician. Anything that you can use to give God glory is what Satan is looking for. He will find you. He will haunt you. And if you do not understand the systems of the kingdom, he will make sure that he makes nonsense out of your life. And listen, the moment he sees that your health and vitality and energy has been committed unto God, he will now find a particular disease and program it across your lineage, not you. If you have headache, that means it may just be that you, need, you just need some time to rest. Satan is too wicked to just give you a headache. Satan wants to program something. You heard that, dear lady? Cancer in um, the grandmother. Just like faith can be transferred. So you program it in a way that a young lady is just 35, 36 and all of a sudden she's feeling, what is this? Ah, mama died of cancer. Now I'm having cancer. Tomorrow another person has cancer. Those people don't need healing. They need deliverance. It looks like it's healing. Ask Jesus, woman thou art loose first. When you are loose, then he laid hands on her. He said, now you, your body can participate. But the real thing is the bondage in the spirit. Are we together now? Yes. Anything you see in your family that is not only you that is suffering, you need to stand for them today. Oh. If you are the only one having it, it may just be your not understanding, your this and that, but provided you are not the only one. No. Your grandmother was raped by a stupid man. Your mother was raped by a stupid man. You, you were raped by a stupid man. Must you wait until your daughter is raped? You stand up and say, in the name of Jesus. Someone paid your grandmother's dowry and ran away. They paid your mother's dowry and ran away. Now somebody is wanting to pay your dowry and, and run away. You stand and say, Lord, this must end. Look, let me tell you, nothing changes until men get angry enough to say, Lord, it must stop. Are we together? Yes, it must stop. How about finances? Look at me. There are some of you here, I don't mean to insult you and I don't mean to embarrass you, but let me tell you the truth. Until God does something to your hand, money will never stay in your hand. I'm not talking about money. You can be as intelligent as whatever. I'm telling you, it takes more than a good transaction to keep this thing. Because money, like a human being, has a spirit, a soul, and a body. The spirit of money is mammon or the Holy Spirit. There has to be a controlling factor. The soul of money is the, the, the intellectual system that brings the exchange. The body of money is the physical thing you are holding. So if all you are holding is just the physical thing, you are a joker. There is a spirit that can call what is in your hand and it will leave you. It's true. So the devil sees that this family wants to call upon the name of the Lord and makes sure that everybody remains poor. Can I tell you this? And I don't mean to insult you, but more than 60% of the people seated here, your major prayer point, corporately as a family, is, oh God, let your heavens be open so that your supplies can come. There may be other things, but you will prefer supplies a thousand times than your leg that is paining you to be, to be fine. There is an agenda. I've shared with you my vision. I will continue to share it. Years ago, I was praying. I think I was, uh, I can't remember what was happening. And then my, my ceiling just disappeared. I didn't see a building again. And the next thing I looked and I saw a giant creature 
mighty creature the eyes as big as the head of a man and then it was it looked like a dinosaur but the tail had its own life meaning you could disconnect the tail from the body and it would still be in existence and it was just fuming with red eyes looking at me and saying so you think you can bring god's people into abundance that was the end that was when i agreed that prosperity is spiritual if all you have is a contract you are joking if all you have is a shop well done but you are in trouble if all you have is a good business you heard the testimony of this dear um wonderful man that came from koza that just shared here now estates and everything just given no it's not just a man that gave him there is a spirit behind it you need to be empowered to fail i hope you know that when you are failing consistently there is an anointing making that happen an anointing is simply an empowerment everybody hates you you are supposed to bless me as soon as i come you hate me i now go here and i'm too late it's not normal when the coincidences are too accurate there is a spirit making it happen someone calls you and says, please come let me give you something to pay the rent of your family the moment that statement happens the devil makes sure that the man receives a call that is an emergency call are you seeing that now and he leaves the office you arrive at the office you find out the door is locked he says if the young man comes just give him two thousand to go back it's a lie the man did not leave something happened there is a spirit behind that operation how many of you have gone to to seek people over something that is so simple maybe just a signature and it will take two weeks three weeks you believe it's normal and then sometimes a man of god may pray for you and speak and you go back and the person who should not be there in the afternoon is now there he was not there an angel kept him there this is how this kingdom operates your destiny helper the destiny helper of your family can be two blocks away from you but because there is no spiritual connection my brother and my sister you can stay 15 years whereas the person ordained by god to lift you is just two blocks you will go to america and return back like a thief you will go to uk and return back like somebody that god hates but the day god decides to locate you you will be surprised is god speaking to us that's why we're here tonight you can be a man of god and like the gentleman who listened to discerning the body probably god has been telling you look your ministry will never grow until you receive a word of impartation and prophecy but you'll be surprised how you'll be planning for five years i will come for koinonia you will now say next week you will say kai uh, ah i'm feeling cold let me just relax as soon as you want to travel your sister will just say ah, i just came on break let me tell you all those acting is a lie but there's something about the will of man the day you stamp your feet and say today i name today as my day of breakthrough the bible said today if you hear his voice every day becomes your today until the day your faith says no tomorrow again it has to be today are we together so tonight i don't want you to sit down and waste your time you are hearing people testify my brothers and my sisters i tell you by the grace of god there is enough grace and power to turn your life to bring any it's not very difficult no it's just your connection stop the arguments the war that is happening in your head can god do this you can't leave lagos leave the east leave the north and come and sit down you are wondering you believe that god brought you to waste your time no sir no sir i tell you in a moment in a twinkling of an eye oh can can the hepatitis go can this go we're talking god here we're not talking the the chief consultant of a, a, a hospital the god of heaven can that yoke go 
We are nine people in our family apostle. Nobody has a job. It's not about the job. The devil has seen that in the job of those nine people is the bread of maybe 30 children. Those nine people, the money from those nine people will empower a church to preach and save somebody who will become a mighty man. And for the sake of that mighty man, those nine people will remain poor. It's not about the family. Hallelujah. If Satan had his way, he will kill me, crumble this ministry, make every koinonia message around the world to disappear all of a sudden in everybody's phone. If he can do that, he can beat his chest and say, I've tried. Ah, but there's a song that says, Satan, shame unto you. You know the song? Don't sing it, oh. <laughs> we make our boast in the Lord. In the next few minutes, we are going to so rubbish the devil in this place. Let me tell you. First of October, we'll let, we'll let the devil know what is in Nigeria. He has tasted what is in America, what is in Russia, what is in this. And then you see your life change. A miracle is a wonder. That, that the limit, oh, hold his hands. Try to stop him. Two of you. You know that game they used to play? That like you try. Oh yeah, do it now. You are, I, don't, no, don't, don't draw him too much. Sorry. You are not very kind. Now, watch this. Are you seeing that now? This guy can be growing old every year. You are celebrating birthday and nothing is moving in your life. Because there is a devil somewhere determined to make sure you don't rise. Let me tell you my assignment. This is me now coming into this equation. My, my assignment is not to cut what is there. My assignment is to carry this like this, this one. Because, you see, I can cut what is there and pass. You can enjoy breakthrough while you are about to go. He's going to hold you and say, come back. Apostle has gone. So the, the job has not been done. My assignment by the grace of God is to carry this mountain you are seeing and carry it out of the way one, that's number one that's not all then my assignment is to turn you to the direction that's where prophecy is powerful and then turn what would have come to you from that delay if i leave you like this you are not oppressed but you are you still don't have breakthrough you are free from oppression but you have not entered your inheritance so you can't testify but whatever that is, when it comes to you and you go to it, and then I leave you, my job is to, and, and the thing is that all these things happen through words. The word that is sent to supervise and make sure you get to your inheritance. And then by next week, you are coming with an employment letter and you are on your knees saying, God, what is this? What is this? Then two weeks later, five people, all barren in your family, are saying, ah, I, I, I think I'm pregnant. Then you just remember, ah, what has happened? A man of God that you have space for 500 people in your church, and yet you see 10 people, 15. During a convention, they grow to 30. By the time service is finishing, there's 20 back. And all of a sudden, something happens. And one speck, spectacular miracle happens by the next Sunday in a way that even the critics say I'm here in your church today to watch what happened and you said I never believed I would buy canopy for an overflow but the anointing God brought you here to change your life listen to me I repeat God brought you here to change your life he didn't bring you to just be happy that a program koinonia. No. This is a miracle service. A miracle service is not a teaching service. I will take out time and teach you, but this is a miracle service. There are some of you, you may not be sick, you may not be oppressed, but you need to carry something that ends every argument. Result, my brothers and my sisters, is the end of every argument. I can lie to you or you can deceive me that you are having a pocket square and I can argue because I'm not seeing it 
but if you bring out a pocket square and i see it this is the end of the argument it will be stupid to still argue at that point you will let everybody know you are a madman this is the result could it be that you have been talking too much let the anointing talk I, I will i will build the house i know god is faithful i will do this and god is saying no moses only spoke small and then the rod kept talking you have been talking forever some of you you are here in this meeting because there is a rod that god will give you you stood before the red sea for forever it refused to part but god brought you here to carry something that you go back with it and it will shock you my brothers and my sisters that that red sea will part and you will call your family and say finally we've been wondering how to build a bridge but we found an easier road that the river can part tonight i want you to know that god wants to do this number one because he loves you but number two there is a dimension of glory only your results can bring to him don't ever let anyone fool you hearing is our father glorified john 15 and verse 8 this is how i am glorified galatians chapter 1 verse 29 says and they glorified god in me not that they glorified god on the throne they looked at my life they saw that god can do this you no father no mother who gave you the job who did you know from the top you're a man of god i used to know your father as a wheelbarrow pusher and you say my brother is what god can do if it is the lord's doing it is marvelous For as long as your life is ordinary, your ministry is ordinary, your business is ordinary, you will continue to explain and explain and argue and explain and explain and explain. Let me tell you, God takes away shame from our lives by giving us results. Did you hear what I said? God does not take away shame by explaining anything to anybody. He does something in your life and he does it in a way like Julius Berger will build a house and put B. God will do it and put his signature. They'll say, no, this business cannot be human. I hear testimonies of people every time. The things that God does in and through their lives a wonder please let your heart be open no don't let the devil make you come here and waste your time whether you are outside overflow one overflow two overflow three online whatever nation you are following just listen i believe him i may not claim i know everything about him but this god when god decides to stand up from his throne he said now arise from your throne god can stand up have you heard that the earth is his footstool so when he decides to stand up and say who has made the cry of my daughter to continue coming the bible says even the mountains keep like lambs my god is mighty our own belief many times is the reason why god does not move we come and sit down and pile up some of you have come with all kinds of forms and pictures and that's wonderful but you are there wondering can you move oh god concerning my money can you move concerning my money can you move concerning my health can you move concerning my wife and god is saying yes i can i am willing and i'm able and then the devil comes very quickly and says if god could move did the man of god pray for you in by march didn't your pastor fast seven days for you and you say it's true oh, that's the devil tonight your faith must be open your faith must rise to the heavens to say lord i don't want to leave this place just knowing i'm blessed i want to know what happened to me i want to hold a substance god is speaking to someone here this this sharing the grace and say ah were you blessed oh my god miracle service was powerful that's not a blessing no you can hold on to something and know that i left this place what happened the pain is gone i left this place what happened 
that before the grace is shared you check your phone and all of a sudden a text that you have been waiting for for five years now that's an evidence this is what we are talking about all of a sudden you are sitting down while you are seeing me preach you have been trusting God for that prophetic grace and while the preaching is going all of a sudden your eyes are open you are saying so this is what apostle is saying and you are seeing the power of God touching somebody and then you hear me say there's someone here and you are saying my God I've gotten this Elisha knew when he got it Elisha knew when he got it he went to the sea where is the Lord God of Elijah and the river parted you are trusting God for the grace for revelation that before the meeting is over all of a sudden scriptures it's as if it's an injection from your spirit you are just connecting one revelation to this and you're saying, I, I can't remember studying this and then you discern that something is happening something is happening that heaviness has gone where is the fear yesterday night I couldn't sleep the fear of death is gone listen Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 says that the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ if you don't expect it and you don't pay attention to it if I ask this gentleman to give me water I'm expectant I'm not expecting a handkerchief I'm expecting water anything I see that looks like water is attracting my attention a double-minded man let that man not think he will receive anything from God thank God for people falling and flying up and down but your eyes is stayed like a flint Lord I left Lagos this morning and I came here I left Bielsa and I came here my car almost had an accident Lord I would have been in a convention now as a man of God I left it to be here I'm looking for something let something come from heaven and your hunger is like a force that is drawing something from heaven and all of a sudden boom I tell you in one minute I remember many years ago when I was standing in the rain had Bonke crusade there were crowds of people like this I didn't know what who wore whether you wore red or green or blue my eyes were fixed Lord what did you give this man that made every nation to open to him what kind of man is this that no one criticizes him Abba, I didn't just go there to receive anointing for miracles alone no when it came I knew that I got it I knew that I got it listen my brothers and my sisters you can know that the load has been lifted you can know that the prayer has been answered you can know that the project is a done deal are we together the grace is here more than available for you and whilst we begin to pray don't just watch others receive be sensitive you are the one who knows what you are here for are we together in one minute I like you to open your mouth and cry mention specifically why are you here talk to the Lord please pray please pray pray with all your heart Lord, I had a young man testify that you gave him properties. I had a young lady, born, had never smelled. She was not in a miracle service, just listening to a message. And all of a sudden, the healing power of God touches that lady and that's it. Lord, I'm tired of this lump. Lord, I'm tired of this medical report. I'm tired of watching my mother cry, my father cry. I'm tired of my ministry not growing. I'm tired of staying at a particular level in the anointing.
Lord, I've heard testimonies of favor. I have an idea of what happens when a man is carrying favor. But Lord, I don't see it yet in my life. I'm here tonight for this one reason. Lord, even after the deliverance series, I've been seeing certain things happen in my life and my family that pre informs me that I will still need a second touch, a second touch over my family. My loved ones are not born again. Lord, I can't watch them go to hell like this. Don't be tired of praying. Please cry from the depth of your heart. Lord, I'm not going back with this disease. I'm not going back with this medical report. No way. No way. No way. I insist. I'm not going back barren. Tired of miscarriages. the universe what can you do what can you do Jesus you're the name above every other name what can you change what can you change Jesus one more time creator Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? I want you to see the Lord lifting your burdens. You're the name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change, Jesus? You are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. You are I will continue to read it for you Isaiah chapter 61 please give it to us the messianic prophecy Jesus's own manifesto he's saying this is what I came to do Isaiah 61 it says the spirit of the Lord we are reading from verse 1 to 4 is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Start looking for your own as I'm reading. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those that mourn. 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beautiful ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. For And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair waste cities, he says. 
the desolations of many generations i like you to pray whatever needs to be fixed in your life and family insist that tonight is the night when it will happen overflow one pray overflow two overflow three by the roadside those following from around the world open up your heart and pray from the depth of your heart hallelujah hallelujah the Lord just showed me something like a train you know a speed train not like we have it now just like a train just passed like this and I believe in my spirit that that is a typology of a grace for speed listen we are going to pray now and like i always say you'll find out when i pray you're going to see people running around in and out please just guide them and bring them out ushers whether you are an usher or not the ushers can only do so much i want to pray once i pray that prayer listen please i don't want you to get listen please hold on i don't want it, the idea is not about people falling down carrying them please let your spirit be open be open for when your word will come be open for when god will visit and locate you that, that's that's what you're here for so i want to pray that prayer now jesus <laughs> i'm seeing a lot of those people at overflow one a lot of the people who will be affected by this prayer I know overflow one the overflow outside you see let me tell you this when a man listen when a man does not have speed in his life you don't have the entire lifetime to do all that you should do it it takes more than just power right please help those in overflow one my god i'm seeing very strange angelic activities happening already at overflow one outside now listen when there is no speed in your life listen imagine that i have to walk from here to maybe the roadside and i'm tiptoeing on one leg am i moving yes sir but when will you arrive there the pressure that you will mount on this leg it will affect you to a point that you may not even stand it and so god when he wanted elijah to move because he had already been delayed the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He was empowered of the spirit and he ran. I, I, I'm, I'm saying this before I pray so that you don't just think it's about anointing and people running around. No. When that grace comes upon you, what God is saying is I'm ready to shift you. That within a short time, you will see a lot happen in your life. In three days, the work of redemption was done three days this powerful redemption did not happen in 12 years it happened in three days by the end of three days jesus had ascended poured his blood returned back he was ready it was now to launch the church big things don't have to take plenty time when the hand of god comes upon you you will see that a defining moment in your life can happen so fast are you ready now lift your hands i want to pray i will do the praying thank you jesus 
the lord is asking me to shout jesus not you now i'm the one shouting jesus i'm going to shout it and at the third time i tell you it's going to be an avalanche of the power of god let me have those people out lord you are bringing speed to your people and i know that there are angels all around it's time to change people's levels and even as you have instructed me oh god as i declare that name that is above every other name i pray that anyone under the sound of my voice who has been crippled in one position that in the name of the god of heaven an anointing will shift that person into his destiny jesus that's number one mm. jesus that's number two get ready now jesus let that anointing right now i shift men speed speed to your life oh god let every delay be broken now i command the spirit of delay be broken speed i shift you by the power of the holy ghost help that woman please help that mama there please help them whether you are an usher or not speed speed in the name of jesus i command everything that has refused to move in your life i move it by the power of the holy ghost i'm still praying i'm still praying the holy ghost is moving you except this prayer is not for you there is an anointing that must shift you must shift you by the power of the holy ghost lord shift them to their destinies please you will need to help the ushers whether you are an usher or not just just help them there's only so much we can do there's no power that keeps you down this is miracle service lift your hands please i'm praying for some of you now is the same prayer but it's no longer just for you you may not be experiencing it but your family needs speed the anointing now is moving from individuals to families lord where are the families that need the shift of the holy ghost i decree and declare right now i speak by this apostolic and prophetic grace families be shifted now speed 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 i decree it i declare it i decree it and i declare it no more delay i stretch my hands i'm seeing an angel of the lord just on this road i stretch my hands right now i move people god is moving people here i decree i declare i decree i declare i decree i declare by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus in the name of jesus it must work for you i shift you no more delay in your life this lady wearing hijab right now the lord is shifting you that lady in the name of jesus i stretch my hands let the anointing of the spirit take away delay from your life right now in the name of jesus now all those in front i'm praying any chain that has tied anyone's leg or any family at the count of three i speak into the realm of the spirit 
those chains go now one two three go 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 i lose those families now i command chains be broken now let the families be set free in the name of jesus young lady lift your hands you you put in your hand on your yes i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on you and the lord is saying that he's shifting things i'm seeing like a chain on your head being broken now i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus let that chain be broken let that chain i command that devil i'm seeing a snake in the spirit let her go now in the name of jesus hallelujah be sensitive i want to pray a very serious prayer now he said behold i give you authority over snakes and scorpions if you don't like the prayer and pray no problem but i want to pray a dangerous prayer i'm seeing snakes this is what i'm seeing over families now let me tell you this reptilian objects is a representation of the spirit of sorcery in the name that is above all names i declare every spirit that has caged any family here I decree and I declare right now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus and at the count of three everyone shout Jesus as you shout Jesus I see fire everywhere inside and outside there is massive deliverance about to happen I command every devil and every activity of sorcery to leave now one two three in the name of jesus i cross satan i cross his works inside outside i command every power every force go now go now hallelujah please be sensitive just give me the volume i'm seeing fire by my left and right just bring out all the people that fall under the anointing now as i'm walking here in the name of jesus i command that devil you must go now you must go now you must go now i declare it by the anointing of the holy ghost as soon as i come close to you that fire and there is an anointing you can't stand it it's impossible as soon as i come close to you as soon as i come close to you that fire there is a judgment let them go now i'm coming this way right now in the name of jesus the power of god is coming this area this direction let them go now release them i come by the anointing of the holy ghost let them go now let them go now release them i'm seeing someone here tied around the stomach release them now let them go in the name of jesus let them go now by the power of the holy ghost i stretch my hands here right now the fire of god is setting people free now lose them lose them lose them lose them lose them lose them now lose them lose them in the name of jesus lose them now those outside lift your hands god is about to set you free please i like you to pray everyone pray enough is enough tonight everyone pray everyone pray now listen overflow one listen to me listen you don't have to touch me please you don't have to touch me 
but in the name of jesus hear me the lord brought me out here because the time has come for something to leave someone as soon as i pass here i don't have to come close to you you are going to feel fire all all over that fire that will be the end of it you must testify right now i stretch my hands right right now it's over over now shakos katanika eketo satarikata embreketo sheketa akato shekriaka manta prekotos let them go 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 now the spirit of sorcery i cause it now the spirit of witchcraft i cause it now please help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves go go be free i command that power by fire by fire by fire it leaves you now those of you here i want you to lift your hands overflow two overflow two lift your hands let me go to the front there enough is enough as i pass this place listen i want you to be very sensitive there is a strong anointing tonight overflow two please help your neighbors i'm only going to pass here right there as soon as i come close to you except god is not god if there is any force holding you holding your life and your ministry it must go right now right now in jesus name be free be free now be free now be free now i command those devils go 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 let them go 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 now release them release them release them every covenant release them i break that power now 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 be broken hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord now listen i didn't know we have an extra overflow here i want to pray for those by the side here as i stretch my hands to you please don't waste your time i'm seeing fire already here in the name of jesus at the count of three those of you by the roadside one two let them go by the power of the holy ghost i release you please help them so they don't injure themselves i declare i decree and i declare you are free Praise the Lord. Overflow three, your life is about to change. Listen. Listen. Honestly, there is, there is an anger in my spirit. Because as I entered, I'm just seeing chains everywhere. Right now, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, bring all of them out. From the front to the back. Right now, at the count of three, overflow three, all of you shout Jesus. One, two, three. Every power, bring them out. Every yoke, every force, every operation of darkness, bring them out. I'm seeing chains on people's feet. Chains, chains, chains be broken now. Be broken now, be broken now, be broken now, be broken now. Change, be broken now. Hallelujah. Bring them out. Overflow three, lift your hands and see praying. Listen. I'm seeing, I'm seeing patterns. Something that is not just happening to you alone. Happening to your father, your mother. As soon as I pray now, I'm seeing fire all over this place. Anyone under that case, you must be free now. At the count of three, anyone holding any pattern, any generational thing in the name that is above all names. At the count of three, one, two, three. Shout Jesus! 
Bring them out. That devil must let you go today. My God, look at what God is doing in Overflow 3. Look at what God is doing in this place. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The Lord is showing me I'm coming back, but I don't know why God is, is, is on the case of overflow three. The Lord is showing me some of you. I'm seeing you are climbing a ladder, but that ladder breaks down and brings you down. You see things as if it's supposed to happen, but a force draws you back. The moment someone wants to lift you, you will have a dream in the night. And in that, in that dream, someone will come to sleep with you or something will happen. Right now at the count of three, shout Jesus. I command those devils. One, two, three. Let them go now. Let them go now. Total emancipation. Hallelujah. Jakakos kaparusi kata hasana katushia. Embrekata katos kata brekatish. Now, now, all those who are under the anointing here outside, I pass a decree that every power that has held you i speak as one send at the count of three let them go one two three go 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 let them go lose your hold over their lives let them go now let them go now let them go now hallelujah i'm inside this place now and I'm standing in the spirit. I've not started impartation yet. But the Lord is showing me the number 12. And the Lord is saying there are 12 people here. There is a strong call upon your life. There is a mighty anointing. Lord, where are they? Drink of that wine. A ministry of signs and wonders. Ministry of signs and wonders. A ministry of signs and wonders. A ministry of signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. I'm still praying. The anointing of the Spirit is still locating men. I don't know why God is talking about ministry. The call. Don't run away from the call. Don't run from the call. A ministry of signs and wonders. The Lord is telling someone, you are the liberator of your family. A ministry of signs. Signs, 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 signs. There are ladies here entering that ministry of signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a distribution of the healing anointing going on in the main auditorium, and I stretch my hands from here. It doesn't matter what overflow, you just be sensitive to what God is doing. Main auditorium, I'm seeing eight people, eight people in the main auditorium at the count of three. Right now, in the name of Jesus fire will come upon your hands i'm prophesying to the main auditorium but everybody can receive i decree and declare that healing anointing one two three let that anointing come now let it come now fresh fire hallelujah listen listen I'm seeing oh my god the lord is opening my eyes here i'm 
I'm seeing someone. Don't don't be ashamed and don't be embarrassed. Your father, I don't know if I'm seeing something like a priest. This is someone that worships something like an idol. It's in your house. I'm not saying you're a bad person, please. I'm not saying you're a bad person. You grew up seeing this happen. That they worship those idols. That gentleman is here in overflow three. Oh, 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 yeah. Please, who is that person? Come. I want to break that thing now from your life. Please, quickly. Please make sure you hear what I say before you come. Just let make way for them. Karakol zahas kanaba kato jabra ates kene hasia. Krakato zakenda sana has kalabako prakatos. The power of witchcraft. Young man, you're going to be a mighty man of God. I don't know you. Lift your hands. An anointing is coming upon you now. Huh? It will shift you to a realm of signs and wonder. Or let that anointing come upon him right now in the name of jesus christ hold my hands my dear the power of idols in the name of jesus i break that force now i break that force now i break the force now testimony of breakthrough for you and for your family in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus hallelujah i'm praying listen i stretch my hands towards you and i speak i don't know what it is that you have been involved in but in jesus name i'm stretching my hands why am i seeing fire leaving my hands who is it looking for in the name of jesus christ I command everything that is not of God be broken now. The blood be broken now. By the blood be broken now. By the blood be broken now. By the blood be broken now. Hallelujah. Just two more things I'll do here. Whether I'm in this overflow or not, I just stood here to show you that it makes no difference. I know the larger congregation is here. Lift your hands, all of you, if you can. Just lift it as high to the heavens. Now, I'm seeing, you don't have to come out, but I'm seeing keys in the spirit. Listen, this is access to a new dimension. And I'm seeing the number 44. Just lift your hands. You don't need to say anything. Father, I stand as one sent. Those keys are locating families and locating people. It may be a key that explains why things have not been working. Lord, from the front to the back, like a mighty wind, whoever must receive that key, receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. let her go now out out now now this lady wearing a red hair tie in the name of jesus i'm seeing a grace that is coming let that anointing come upon you in the name of jesus christ let that anointing come upon you hallelujah overflow three i'm seen by the spirit the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing the names of members of your family like written already written already i'm going to pray listen except god has not sent me as i'm praying some of you instantly the power of god will come upon you and god is going to open your eyes you are going to see victory and deliverance 
in fact i see a family where three of your siblings they've married none of them has a child none of them at all has a child they've done everything to do but there's no child but i stand in the name of the lord father where are those families right now like a mighty wind like a mighty wind oh god let it end right now let there be an opening let there be an opening let there be an opening in the name that is above all names let there be an opening young lady come call that lady for me call this gentleman too this man yes bring him in the name of jesus you need to be delivered i command the spirit that torments you to go now by the power of the holy ghost i release you my dear hold my hands to you i'm seeing that your life is about to change two weeks from now it will surprise you what the lord is going to do in your life i decree and i declare it over your life i stand by the anointing and i pray for you father according to your word within two weeks turn this lady's life around supernaturally in the name of jesus emeka who is emeka emeka i'm hearing a name emeka overflow three here i'm just talking to overflow three people emeka emeka please quickly please quickly don't waste our time where is that gentleman what's your name i want to pray what do you do i'm going to pray for you you are not from this place you came for nyc I want to pray lift your hands because i'm seeing look at me the lord is giving you the grace for wealth huh i want you to believe it but every prosperity that does not have an assignment will end up destroying the people you love jesus with all your heart i want to pray for you it will surprise you the way god will begin to turn things around in your life father change this gentleman's story in the name of jesus forever overflow three i'm still praying the spirit of prophecy is coming on nine people i will count four at the fourth count one two three where are they oh god four nine people nine people the spirit of prophecy the spirit of prophecy All of you, open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything you desire, overflow three. Open your mouth and decree. Open your mouth and decree. I'm seeing an anointing around here. Who is that person? I stretch my hands. I'm seeing chains breaking just within this region as I'm standing here. Father, let the chains be broken now. The anointing of the Spirit. Find that person. Let the chains be broken right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now right now be broken now Hallelujah. please everyone pray everyone pray everyone pray everyone pray hold on there's someone here the lord is saying i'm rolling away your shame i'm seeing light as i was just passing i just saw light two people let the anointing find those people now two people right now i decree overflow two right now in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name i decree and declare by the anointing of the holy ghost shame reproach let it go now shame reproach let it go now shame reproach help them let it go now in the name of jesus christ who is gabriel 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 i'm hearing a name who is gabriel is there someone like that you are wearing a maroon you are wearing like maroon kaftan gabriel maroon kaftan is there someone like that what's your name do i know you lift your hands my brother god is about to change your life god is about to turn your life around uh, where are you coming from? 
I want to pray for you. You love Jesus. What is is it Poleku or Aleku? What is that? Huh? Huh? Where are you from? Benway State. You are from Benway State. This is what has tied down your life and your family. I want to pray for you. I'm not a herbalist there. Eh? Father, in the name of Jesus, let this gentleman be free right now. I command that devil to leave you now. Just keep him there. In the name of Jesus. These two people, this gentleman, you, yes, and the lady by you. Come quickly. Please. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. What do you do, my friend? You are a student. You love Jesus. I want to pray for you. Huh? Yes, are you together? Yes, sir. Because I saw light on you. Husband and wife? Yes, please. Well, I'm not going to discuss your issue now, but two of you need deliverance. Eh? You love Jesus, but you need serious deliverance based on what I'm seeing now. Huh? You are not husband and wife yet, but I'm seeing a lot of stories. Father, in the name of Jesus, look at me. You're going to be very wealthy, but the first thing you need to edit are your friends. Huh? Hear what I'm telling you. Huh? My, uh, my sister, you know what I'm saying, right? Huh? So your friends. Huh? Confirm, sir. Listen to me. You are not truly born again if your friends don't change. Hear it from me. All this born again that is one leg and you have all kinds of friends. If, if I am a drunkard and you are not a drunkard but we are staying together, I'm close to a drunkard. That means I can be implicated by everything a drunkard can be implicated by. Is that true? So, my friend, you love God, eh? But you see, um, look at what I'm doing. One leg in, one leg out. Huh? Don't be embarrassed. When I make the altar call, you need to run and come quickly. Jesus is not just some religious thing that you just run to. Just for, No, 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 no. Let, let's take God serious and take him. Look what i see my friend i see god turning your life in a way that will surprise you but friends and this is not just a message to this gentleman alone it's a message to many of us because the demons that destroy our lives work by bringing wrong friends they make you compromise your values it's not your fault but when they come they are vocal about what they believe and because you do not have a community of like-minded believers but let me tell you the truth it matters who you listen to if the devil positions a wrong person to counsel you and they give you a counsel of Ahitophel God may be calling you to a great ministry but you will hear a counsel that would destroy God's purpose over your life I pray for everyone here that in the name of Jesus if you are under the yoke of wrong friends I stand and I speak right now. May the Lord set you free this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, there is favor on your life, but it's not speaking at all. Hmm? You are a nice lady. Come. I'm looking at you. I'm seeing a young lady, but I'm seeing the face of you and another old woman flashing me and going back. See, wickedness is real. Oh. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, wickedness is real. Huh? This is a young, beautiful lady. You see her standing. But you now look at it. Do you know, let me explain something. Whatever overflow, just listen. I want to explain something. You see, this is the mistake that we men of God make sometimes. I can look at a beautiful lady like this now and see the face of an old woman and if my word base is not sound and balanced i will i will interpret the vision i've seen verbatim and now call her a witch you see the mistake we make that we call people and then assuming now they are married i will now advise him and say mr man you married a witch oh you do you know what it means to be a witch so God is, you see that God is, is balancing a lot of things in our lives. Let's be careful. Because sometimes we may see a vision. I already know what is happening. It is true that the lady needs help. But it doesn't mean, imagine that I look at this lady now and say, my dear, you're a witch. No. This is a lovely, she has a beautiful heart. I already see by the spirit. Very beautiful heart. But it, beauty and a good heart does not take away oppression. 
it takes the power of God. How terrible art thou in your ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. So many of you are here, you find out, for instance, the moment you enter a relationship, come for instance, as you mean, I enter a relationship with this lady and you find out that there may be something wrong in her life and it starts affecting me. Have you seen that happen? I'm doing well in business, but just because I married this lady, I start going down. And now you meet a man of God and if, the man, if you're in ministry here, please be careful. You have to trust God for grace to be balanced. Are we together? I can now look at this lady and say, Ah, your wife is the reason behind your failure. Um, what I'm trying to say is that, Oh, there might be a spirit connected to her that is affecting me and the works of my hands. But it doesn't mean she's bad. A good man of God will bring about that separation. And then through the transforming power of the word, now help this couple to stand and become the best of couple. Because a body without a spirit is dead. So it's not about condemning and destroying the body. Are you getting it now? So my dear, let me tell you, you're a wonderful lady. Huh? We're going to deal with this nonsense now. This whatever it is that the devil is... Because this thing is affecting your life. You don't know why good things don't come to you. You're a very nice lady. Hold my hands. Father, hold it with both of your hands. I decree and declare. Ah! I'm seeing fire leaving my hands in the name of Jesus I command this devil I'm seeing through the face of this old woman be gone now my dear I set you free and I open the door of favor for you right now please everybody lift your hands I'm seeing I've not seen this in a long time I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing an anointing going to Benway State Benway State now. Benway State. You are from Benway State. You see that that power will touch you. Even if you don't know what state you are from. Benway State. Lord, where is in the name of Jesus? The power of God is bringing deliverance. Benway State. In the name that is above all names. In the name that is above all names. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I'm going to pray for you. Two things. I'm seeing that the devil wants to put stroke, complete stroke. The devil wants to paralyze you from head to toe. But we're going to destroy that now. In the name of Jesus, hold my hands. I decree and declare, be free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Madam, I don't know you, but ah, you please come. Ah. This is your first time coming. I need to pray for you. What do you do, ma? you are jobless ma huh i'm looking at you and i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit two of your hands are tied there is nothing you do that works and prospers it's not normal you are a very good woman please don't be embarrassed i hope i'm not embarrassing you i want to pray for you i give you three weeks 21 days ma your life will turn around in a way that will surprise you i lay my hands right now and I declare, I'm seeing chains leaving you. I command those chains to go. Father, turn her life around. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Hold on. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. I open that closed door now. I open that closed door now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Everyone, open your mouth and pray. The Lord is asking me to stand here, just here, just to stand here. Because the Lord is bringing breakthrough here and here, here and here, right now, here and here. I command right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, every planting that is not of God, I uproot it now, I uproot it now, I uproot it now. Lift your voice and begin to pray, please. Lift your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know our time is gone. We are going to be very fast. Sir, you're welcome, sir. Can I pray for you, sir? Why are they here? Priest. 
You, sir, you are a priest. I served, my father served and died. And Sorry, where are you from, sir? I'm from Mallory. Sir, I want to pray for you. The Bible says, even the lawful captives, even the lawful captives. My brothers and my sisters, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life after this miracle service. This, this woman, come. Madam, you, yes, come. Please, quickly, come. We're out of time. Say in Jesus' name. Say it in Jesus' name. My life is about to change. Say it again. Say in Jesus' name. Reproach is leaving me now. In the name of Jesus, let it go forever. In Jesus' name. Sir, I hold your hands and in the name of Jesus, every ordinance that is not of God, help him. I command that it is broken right now. You are an elderly man, but I use you as a point of contact. We break every ordinance of darkness. This, this lady too. Priest, you, your dad, your father is a priest. Currently. Oh, where? Oshun State. Don't be embarrassed, eh? You are here because Jesus wants to help you. Lord Jesus, it is not your will that any man perish, but that everyone comes to the knowledge of the truth. I deliver this lady right now. Everything they have given you to drink and eat, I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I set you free now. Be gone. Now. Out. Let it leave her. I'm seeing that the father has given her so many things in her life. But in the name of Jesus. Hi. Jesus' power is really superpower. Really superpower. That in one moment, something that has been done in a lifetime can live. Out. Now. Everything that is not of God. A father is a priest, or not her uncle, direct father. Imagine how many times she has been involved in all of these things. But in Jesus' name, you are set free. This this man too. Why is he here? Look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes. You are receiving the healing anointing now. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, grant him access to the healing anointing, your healing power. Now, oh dear, our time is gone. This is, sometimes I honestly wish that this, this, because there are so many things I see, but we have to work with time. This lady, you, come. Hurry up now, please, come. Uh, we're out of time. Wonderful lady, look at me. You are a savior to your family. You hear what I said? You are a savior. You may look small, but you are a savior to your family. The only thing is that you need to continually be serious with God. Your heart with him. Your heart with him. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take away distraction from her life. Right now, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I take away distraction. I take away distraction. Okay? We have we've not even prayed for the sick girl. my dear come this lady waving your hands come quickly your life is about to change come where are you coming from you are coming from abuja yes, i'm here with my husband husband yeah. where are you sir let's clap for the husband <clears throat> two of you came from abuja Last time you came with for SOM. Came. I can't remember. You came with your oh your son was a graduate of SOM. No. We came with him. Oh, okay. So I'm a graduate. I want to pray. What do you do, sir? Um, I'm a minister of God, but at the same time I do business boys. Sir, working. I want to pray for you, eh? Things are not working. You need the anointing. You are a sincere man. My dear, the prophetic grace is coming on you as I'm speaking now. In the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands. That anointing you will start having dreams receive that grace two of you need empowerment ministry ministry without genuine empowerment will make it look as if you are wasting your time are you a man of God stand up stand up take that anointing now in the name of Jesus you step into a new dimension I take away shame 
and reproach from your life and ministry. From today, you step into a realm of signs, wonders, miracles. In the name of Jesus. Can I pray for you, sir? Look at me. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Just hold it with both of your hands. In the name of Jesus, I transfer grace, signs and wonders, strange testimonies, your business between now and 30th of November, sir. Your finances will change, you and your wife, in ways that will surprise you. You will come back and testify. In the name of Jesus Christ. This man waving your hands, come together with that woman by your side. Who is she? Come, please, two of you, quickly. Let's appreciate them as they come. Oh, oh, oh. to you sir i want to pray for you ah. madam i'm looking at you you're a nice woman but i'm seeing you carrying a load huh i'm seeing you like this and i'm seeing a load on your head and if i don't pray for you this load is going to destroy you i want to pray for you where are you coming from sir? are you new here uh, by elsa by elsa hmm. all the way i think we should appreciate them <laughs> what do you do sir I'm a pastor. You're a pastor. You are in ministry, both of you. Evangelist. My ministry is separate. Your ministry is separate, evangelist. but both of you came from yes, Bielsa. You are an evangelist. Yes. You pastor a church. Yes. How long has it been? Okay, I was uh, about four years now in Bielsa. But you were somewhere. Yes, I was in Abuja. You were in Abuja, yes. and then you left Abuja and went to Bielsa. Do you know what happened? Is it your church now? You're serving someone else's church. Okay, I want to pray for you. Because what I see God do through your life, I'm seeing God giving you two things. The grace for leadership, number one. Number two, the grace for finances. These two graces, God is giving it to you. I don't know you, sir. I'm seeing you for the first time. Ma, you're an evangelist. I'm going to pray for you. What do you do? You hold crusades and all of that? No, I, I usually have meetings every month and then I speak on radio. I have a live radio. I do my evangelical on radio and then. Oh, you do a live radio? Yes, live radio talk show. Three things one, barrenness. Two, poverty. Three, witchcraft. You are carrying the grace to smash nonsense out of these three things as you are going back. Don't forget. Huh? The same grace on you, I'm seeing it come on this lady, this one, this one, this lady I'm talking to. I want to pray for you. Sir, this thing is an election of grace. You see, I'm, I'm also a spectator, the same way you are watching, me too I'm watching. With wonder and shock, the way this thing works. That God can just change a man's life overnight overnight evangelist my hold my hands father this is a dear woman of god all the way from bielsa i stand by the anointing of the holy spirit and i declare fresh anointing fresh dimensions in the spirit and i pray madam the lord is asking me to pray for your finances seriously for your finances and then the lord is saying i should tell you to pray for faithful workers I'm seeing you do a program for women when you go back. This thing I'm seeing is going to be a powerful program. There is a program in Abuja that looks like what you would do. It's called When Women Pray. I'm seeing that same kind of grace on you. That you are going back to Bielsa and God is giving you uncommon grace for women. In the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare you carry that grace right now, madam. My God will honor you. Ah! In the name of Jesus, supernatural grace. Drink of that wine. Sir, I'll pray for you. The grace for leadership, the grace for finance. But I'm, ah, it's not only pastoring I'm seeing you do. What else do you do? I manufacture paint. You manufacture paint. That's right. 
sir what am i seeing this is somebody it's, it's not directly the government but this is somebody that is connected to the government the lord is going to connect him to you it's, it has something to do with supplies that thing will make you millions overnight in a way that it will surprise you please write it you will see it happen father in the name of jesus i pray for this man of god i stretch my hands drink of that wine that anointing drink of that wine you will never be the same i stretch my hands i take away every limitation from your life and i decree and i declare your life turns around from today in the name of jesus give jesus praise goodness 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 Can we still pray for the sick? We can't close this without praying for the sick. Daddy, I see you. You held my heart in a dream. You will pray for me. In the name of Jesus, be healed from it now. I command that devil, that virus, go now. In the name of Jesus, you go and write your test, bring back your results. Go listen i can we yeah. time is gone. Oh dear. you see how sometimes this thing we are really constrained that's why we do our best the healing anointing is already flowing god wants to heal maybe i'll just pray i'll just pray for the sick from here we'll do it that way right but make no mistakes just that you that you are not coming out doesn't mean i want to pray for you now we'll take a few testimonies now in the last three or four months i have seen i don't know why this happens but i have seen a dimension of the healing power of god very creative miracles so i want to pray you are trusting god for a miracle lay your hand right now on your body quickly i want to pray for you now please believe god for a miracle now this is what will happen overflow one two three the roadside and then those following us online our time is gone but as soon as i pray for you now i pray for you the power of god is going to come upon you i'm going to ask you to check yourself praise the lord we may not take all the testimonies but since we have chosen this method now as soon as i pray i ask you to check yourself you will be surprised what has happened to you and whether you are in overflow one two or three i'm going to ask you to run very quickly you're going to come right here pastor jimmy will be here with pastor alpha they will just check you and we'll take one or two of the testimonies and i'll just confirm that um how many of you brought your prayer request let me see did you bring your prayer request okay ushers this is what you, i want you to do pr department help them protocol please help them while i'm praying for the sick i think we can do it too your prayer request please make sure that your prayer request or that of your loved ones get to the ushers just lift it the ushers have a system of collecting it you don't have to be rowdy those outside you can pass it to the last person in the aisle if you will not bring any confusion you can have that very quickly please lay your hands now i want to pray jesus A lady in overflow one is going to shout a loud shout for everybody to hear as soon as that shout happens i'll begin to pray for the sick very loud shout from overflow one a strong anointing is coming on that person the moment that happens that's the shout there now i'm ready to pray for the sick in the name Please agree with me everyone in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now those under the anointing you don't have to bring them out I'm, I'm praying now every spirit of infirmity please make sure you are hearing me overflow one two three every spirit of infirmity right now by the power of the Holy Ghost I curse you now I curse you now say amen I curse you now in the name of Jesus. 
I command every spirit behind every infirmity over anyone's life be healed now in Jesus name be healed my God the power of God is touching people already be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus overflow one two three by the roadside be healed in the name of Jesus now I command every blood condition be healed from it now in Jesus name peptic ulcer the Lord is healing ulcer right now be healed in the name of Jesus Christ be healed in the name of Jesus Christ lumps all kinds of lumps multiple lumps I command those devilish lumps to live now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing a number of people having um, hepatitis the Lord is healing hepatitis right now by the power of the Holy Ghost eye conditions in the name of Jesus you're going to feel fire just come to your eyes be healed right now in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus every pain that has to do with the bones I decree and declare let the power of God touch you right now there's someone you have severe pain around your back just right here your lumbar vertebra in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands be healed right now in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name there's someone you don't hear well with your this is left left ear and then sometimes you just hear like a sharp you know how bees are that sound the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus every kind of fibroid every kind of growth in your stomach in the name of Jesus be healed from it now be healed from it now be healed from it now now whether I mention your case or not whatever is wrong with you I stretch my hands and I declare be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus some of you when you fell under the anointing long before I started praying for the sick you got up and found out that you have been healed now overflow one if they are coming here for the healing please just clear the way for them overflow one overflow two overflow three and the roadside I'll give you a minute those online if you're healed you can you know just just send it as an inbox on our Facebook page or you can find a way to post it I want you to check yourself now within a minute or two the moment you find out that the power of God has touched you make your way some of you you get up under the anointing you find out that the pain there's a lady who has a severe case of bleeding go and check yourself the bleeding is gone gone completely and I'm seeing someone heaviness around the chest is just lifted gone like that please check yourself very quickly and come we may not take all the testimonies but at least let's take a few while we are doing that let me have all the prayer requests very quickly God bless you check yourself quickly Koinonia are you celebrating Jesus the Lord is touching people show them where to come look at look at God touching people already please make your way make your way the power of God has touched you those outside overflow one overflow two clear the way for them just come you can stand on the queue there and let's have one or two testimonies God bless you Koinonia are you celebrating miracles here yeah. Make your way. Be bold. Don't be ashamed. Make your way as soon as the power of God has touched you. Back pain since hold last on, year. Hold on, you... just a moment, please. All make sure if 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 your prayer request has not been collected, please. I want you to wave it. Jesus is still healing people. You just come join the queue. God bless you. Yes, please. Back pain since last year. Can you, you... sit for a, a few minutes? Just sit for a few minutes and then we're done. Let's just hear the testimonies. If as you are hearing the testimony, God is still healing people and i want you to make your way and then come to okay go ahead pastor Alpha. my god the... god is still touching people i'm seeing people being touched even in overflow three overflow three check yourself right now and make your way yes please you go mentioned ahead. the case of back pain she's been having the problems this last month back but pain. she's now how long come my dear let's have another mic please anytime we're doing this please technically it should be a standard procedure you should know what we're doing please 
so that we don't delay unnecessarily how long my dear since last month yes. in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare it never returns again by the power of the holy spirit back pain gone forever heaviness in the chest disappeared how long my dear just when you came here in the name of jesus hold my hands um i'm seeing someone you had something like a a growth around your neck check it now you'll be surprised to find out it's gone gone completely gone completely by the power of the holy ghost gone completely in jesus name i declare that every operation of darkness over you is gone in jesus name give jesus praise deafness in the left ear since 2012 since 2012 oh come on koinonia how long my friend a man of god told me about it 2012 and i prayed but i was hearing those b sounds and i don't hear really which well. of them the left ear. put your hand there now in the name of jesus it never never returns to you by the power of the holy spirit yes also you mentioned also how long yes okay where are you from kaduna, sir. kaduna state yes, sir. that's where you are from yes, your state of origin no, biologically biologically where yeah. are you from i'm from each petal court i mean I know I'm state, I there's a reason why i said this there's a lot you don't know where you are from there is a long story leave the issue of healing now where eh? i need to pray for you don't feel bad huh look at me where are your parents who are you staying with my mom and mother my stepdad at kaduna okay it's okay i'll talk to you eh? father help this gentleman because this gentleman is a great gentleman but there is a lot i'm seeing in your life I crush the hand of darkness over your life now and I declare be free in Jesus All name. Sir, Koinonia, you are pain. not celebrating. You are so used to miracles in this place. He was feeling the May pain, but as you prayed for him, it left. It's gone completely. How long? Since July. July. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord perfect you. Apostle, you mentioned someone with pain at the back. It was her for the past three years. What's your name, my dear? Juliana. Juliana. You mentioned something the lower uh, the lower ventilator. back pain it affected her left leg also this pain in check her it back. now check it check it any pain yes. it's gone completely give the Jesus last three praise. years <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ it never returns to you again please make sure that we have the request if you are still yet if you are still with your wave it just wave it and an usher will come look at that man and you are sitting quietly there you wave it and let them know pain at the back completely healed pain at the back you fell under the anointing. Ah, see you looking. In the name of Jesus. It's, it's a good baguette, my friend. Huh? If you fall under the anointing and your destiny arises, it's a wise baguette. Is that true? In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, never again in your life. The power of God is coming on someone in overflow one. Overflow one. Please carry the person and bring the person. Overflow one, the overflow by the roadside. Overflow two, sorry. Overflow two, I meant to say. Ah, look how powerful the power of God is. I said overflow one, and nothing happened. I just said overflow two. Then I now went to say. She's had pain on the left left shoulder since. How long, my dear? Seven. Let her talk. How long? Seven. 2007 you've had what i've had this pain it will come and go come and go but today it has been intense but when you mentioned the case the pain left it's gone completely check yourself do what you couldn't do up down come in the name of jesus christ i will pray but the person i'm talking about is overflow two overflow two the overflow by the roadside so you bring the person in the name of Jesus perfection for you right now in Jesus name she's had serious um, back pain that back she pain. had to start horse riding so that you can correct but today they asked you to ride a horse yes who said you should ride a horse the doctor yeah. or just advisors <laughs> don't, don't she's shy <laughs> the horse this is the man 
It's amazing how you come for koinonia minding yourself and you are surprised to see people just carrying you and you are wondering, where am I going to? The anointing. Amazing. Let me just talk to them and then... Don't worry, do your horse thing, eh? I'm just happy that you are healed. So you can go and ride your horse now for fun. In the name of Jesus, you are perfected, completely perfected. In Jesus' name. I take away this proverb called Ichabod over your life and over your family. I'm speaking to both of you now from overflow too. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. And I decree and declare that that proverb shall no longer be mentioned in your life. It will no longer be Ichabod. In Jesus' name. I'm coming here, but you are the one I'm talking to. Where? Eh? Debbie. It's not the, this person. You hold this one. Don't worry, they'll hold her. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying he is going to use you to change everything in your family. It will be like a dream, but he is going to use you. He's making you a savior over your family. Don't ask how it's going to happen. It's by the anointing. The spirit entered me when he spake unto me that God is going to use you and change everything in your family in the name of Jesus yes go ahead she's had severe menstrual pain since she started menstruating that resulted in serious back pain how Came old are you now pain this evening sir how old are you now 21 21 and she's had severe menstrual pain yes and she came here with the pain today but the don't pain believe is gone. that thing oh in the name of Jesus I cancel it forever amen. say amen by the power of the Holy Spirit, severe menstrual pain goes back to hell. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. She had headache, heaviness in the chest. Heaviness? In the chest. Okay. And then she had severe headache. And as she prayed for her, it totally and, left. And what? Hiccup. She's... The heaviness used to make her hiccup. She was even hiccuping during the service. But as she prayed, she's totally healed. God bless you. Look at me. Where did you come from? Kaduna. Kaduna State. You are going back, eh? Where's your mother? She's in Bauchi. When are you going to see her? I'm serving in Kaduna, so it has to be December. December. If I, if I give you an instruction for your mother, will you obey it? Eh? Look for 1,000 Naira recharge card, eh? Yes, Send it to your mother to bless her okay. and watch what happens in your life. Amen. You just do what I ask you to do. It's not some superstition. Please, you get my point. It's just the law of honor that will trigger something. I release my faith with you. Your mother is going to pray one prayer for you that looks like she's playing, but you watch what that play will do in your life. In she Jesus. had ulcer, peptic ulcer. As she prayed for her, she was totally... Peptic healed. ulcer. How long? Put your hand on your chest. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, peptic ulcer goes back to hell. In the mighty name of Jesus goes to hell forever she also had ulcer but she also had kidney inflammation she used to feel a sharp pain she's been healed of the ulcer now when she presses the place before press she it. Will feel press it press it any pain no pain gone completely no. come on koinonia may god forgive you may god you people have seen signs and wonders too much to a point that god bless you he had a sharp pain in his left side okay. you mentioned it and then he also used to experience dizziness that he would just be standing be dizzy and then slump but as you prayed for him he was totally you just slump like that yeah they may even have to catch it it happened, it happened once august august 26 you just slump like that yes i was falling and then my brother caught me come what if you fall down like the epileptic patient that used to fall inside fire the devil would just wait until you are crossing a bridge then that wicked spirit will come because he comes to steal to kill and to destroy in jesus name i set you free you are free now you are free forever in jesus name back pain disappeared he's had back pain for a long time back pain sir on. yes in jesus name let it go and go forever never to return again in sometimes the two eyes go blind other times only the right one go blind but now he's totally healed he can see with both eyes have you gone to the hospital for this but sometimes you just go blank like that come in the name of jesus put your hands on your eyes i decree and declare perfection it's not just the bones are what give structures to a person doctors tell us that means that by this miracle god is speaking through it right like he's doing the miracle of ezekiel 37 the bones coming back be a restoration of it 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Yes, please go ahead. So back pain. He came here with waist pain. Sorry, waist pain. He came here with How long? Serious pain. 2014. And now, it's gone. try to turn. It's gone. He Completely. squatted for me and um, no squat. You've not. You did it for him. Yes. You didn't do it for me. Ah, it looks like a footballer. Gone and gone. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.